then I'll ask you, I'll ask your opinion on what to expect out of today's game. Okay. I'm on All right. Just want to talk for a minute, so just give me an answer. We'll just try to start a conversation. All right, sounds starts. good. <laughs> if you want to bring up specific players, that always helps. It's a good thing to, like, kill some time. Okay. Talk about how good a player is or who you expect to stand out. College football is back, and welcome to Memorial Stadium here in Westerville, Ohio, home of the Otterbein Cardinals. Today's matchup is the first of the OAC between the Muskinger Muskies and the Otterbein Cardinals. I'm here with my partner, Nate Edel Eddington. And, Nate, what do you expect out of the Cardinals today? Well, I expect a lot from their defensively, but mostly offensively. Logan Stepp has improved a lot from last season. He had over 400 yards at Ohio Westland, and I feel like he should have another good game today. But someone else to look at is Christian Johnson. And let me tell you, his running abilities, because he's only 5'6", 188 pounds, but he can sure run the ball. And another person to look at is Hunter Joseph, who had over 147 yards last game with only nine touches. And I feel like he's going to be a very, very big help for the Otterbein Cardinals offense. Yeah, you mentioned that running game. Uh, Otterbein's got a, a good offense going for them, and a lot of it runs through quarterback Logan Stepp. He had 22 carries last week. He was a leading rusher with 62 yards, not to mention the 402 yards he passed for last week, which is a career high for him here at Otterbein. So, yeah, Otterbein's got a, they got a good team this year. They got a good squad set. They got a lot of experience on the offensive side of the ball. And on the defensive side, they got a lot of talent. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how the Cardinals match up with this Muskingum team. As they did, they did win last week. They beat Wayne, Waynesburg 19 to nothing down there at uh, Muskingum. So they're coming into this game 1-0. I mentioned at the beginning that this is the only matchup in the OAC today. A lot of OAC teams usually have that second week by, but uh, we're, we're very happy and proud to be bringing you this broadcast between the Cardinals and the Muskies here at Memorial Stadium in Westerville. As I said before, I'm Hayden Heilshorn here with my partner, Nate Eddington, and you are watching Otterbein TV. It's a beautiful day out. Looks like there's going to be no rain, all sun, all day, which would be nice. And uh, we... We're really excited to bring you this game, folks. First one of the year for the Cardinals. First of four home games that the Otterbein Cardinals have this year. One night game coming up against Baldwin Wallace later on in the year. But uh, you gotta love that that uh, afternoon Saturday college football atmosphere. Definitely, especially looking forward to the Ohio State Buckeyes game later tonight at 7.30 against Oklahoma at rank number five. The crowd here looks pretty good. The atmosphere is very good. A little breezy, but I don't think that'll stop the Otterbein Cardinals from having a great game, and as well as Muskingum. Yeah, you like uh, you talk. A lot of people talk about Columbus being the biggest college, biggest small college town that there is in the country, and uh, it re it really is with the Buckeyes. But you forget sometimes that there are the the three other smaller school, the, the smaller schools here in Columbus that really add to that atmosphere. And you know, I'm I'm sure there's some folks here that are going to be attending both games, the, the Cardinals game and the and the Buckeyes game, and and it's a, you get a little taste of both. Um, a lot of people that come into Division Three football think, okay, it's going to be you know just kind of like high school, same similar crowd size, but it really does have that college football feel. You know, you waking up early on Saturday mornings, getting ready for the game, uh, getting over the stadium, you walk in, you see the tailgaters out. Uh, it's it's certainly a fun, unique atmosphere here in Westerville, and um, captains. Making their way onto the field. Logan Stepp and Kyle Bluse, both seniors wearing number five. Kyle Bluse on the defensive line for the Cardinals and Logan Stepp on the offensive side. Number five is that honorable number given to what is the senior leader. And this year is the first year that it is given to two Cardinals.
Cardinals have made their way onto the field, getting ready to run out for the fans here. And college football is just minutes away from being back here in Westerville, Ohio. As we said, captains making their way onto the field. Stephen Carpenter, Kyle Blues, Austin Jones, and Julian Lowe, all the captains for the Cardinals. Captains for the Cardinals, number three, Austin Jones, number five, Kyle Blues, number five, Logan Steps, number 11, Julian Lowe, and number 40, Stephen Carpenter. What a fun, beautiful day it is today. Perfect weather, wouldn't you say, Nate? Oh, I definitely agree with that. Sunny out, breezy, but I got to tell you, this is definitely fo college football weather, and I'm excited to be here for the first home game of the Arbonne Cardinals. We talk so much about Logan yeah. Stepp <laughs> being the highlight for the Cardinals on offense, but the truth is the Muskie and Muskies got some power on the defensive end for their side. Chris Weck won Defensive Player of the Week last week in the OAC with nine tackles. Three tackles for loss, one sack, and an interception. Pretty good for a defensive end. Oh, I definitely agree. They, Audubon has some good offense and defense, but let me tell you, Muskingum has a pretty good defense, and I feel like Audubon. They pitched gonna, a shutout last oh, week. Oh, they did. They did. So I feel like Audubon needs to work away ar around uh, Muskingum's defense to in order to win, but I have no doubt that Audubon will figure a way out to get the win today. Both these teams had similar seasons last year. Muskingum finished the year four and six. Otterbein finished the year not much better at five and five. So both these teams looking to get on the winning side of the of the Welcome conference. The the and they both started out one and zero, oh, and they want this. Both teams are going to want this one bad today. They know it's a winnable game. It was a close one last year. So Otterbein will receive the ball to start this game. And that familiar fight song that the Otterbein band is playing. Muskingum has made their way to the bench. And these fans much awaiting Otterbein football to be back. They got the win last week at Ohio Wesleyan and it was a big one. Fans on your feet and and here the come the Cardinals. Cardinals. Otterbein wearing white hats, red jerseys, and red pants with white numbers and tan trim. Muskingum over on the other side wearing the black hats, white jerseys, black numbers, and black pants. So we are just moments away from kickoff here. And Nate, you talked about Logan Stepp at quarterback, Julian Lowe and Hunter Joseph, Christian Johnson on offense. But let's not forget the kind of damage that Josh Pleininger did for the Cardinals as they struggled in the opening half of last week's game. Logan Stepp found Josh Pleininger quite a few times on third and long. And Otterbein did pretty good on third and long last week. Muskingum, on the other hand, didn't convert very well. Only had one third down conversion on 14 attempts. So Muskingum's offense struggling to convert on third down. Otterbein's offense not. I think the best and most fun part of the day will be when Otterbein has a football and Muskingum's defense is on the field. To kick off for the Cardinals, or for the Muskies, to receive for the Cardinals is Julian Lowe at about the 15-yard line. Taking it up, he's got a hole, and he finds right through it and gets sackled at about his own 45-yard line. So a nice return right there for the Cardinals and already getting a little life into this crowd. I got to tell you what. You're going to see a lot of him during today's game with a lot of good highlights, and he's going to be carrying the ball a lot more today than you expect. Logan Stepp, as we mentioned, Offensive Player of the Week in the OAC, coming back at quarterback. This Otterbein offense didn't go under center one time last week, so we'll see this shotgun formation all throughout the day. Christian Johnson to his left, and three receivers to the left, motioning Peyton Vanderkoy from left to right. Step snaps, play action, steps back, throws over the top to Hunter Joseph. He's got a man and a catch and all the way. Touchdown, Cardinals. First play of the game. And what do you expect? 
Logan Step to Hunter Joseph for a 55-yard receiving touchdown, and what a way to start the game. I gotta tell you what, again, Logan Step is probably the key of this game of their offensive line. He can pass the ball, he has a great eye, but not only that, their wide receivers are another big factor for the offense. And I gotta tell you what, first play, that's that's pretty impressive for the Auburn Cardinals, and I can't wait to see so it's only been it's 14 minutes and 46 seconds, and we already have a touchdown. That's that's just amazing. Hunter Joseph with his sixth recept or excuse me second reception touchdown of the season. Kick is good. Cardinals Joe lead. San Filippo's kick here. is up and good, and Otterbein with an early seven nothing lead. Drive, one play, 55 and yards, just like that, Muskingum's perfect season seconds. of not giving up a score comes to a quick end, as we expected it to in this game, but not on the first play. What a nice play call by Tim Daup there. Tim Daup in his sixth season with the Cardinals. Has a career record here of 29 and 23. He graduated from Otterbein in 1992. He's 5-0 against Muskingum. And right now he's got a 7-0 lead against the Muskies. And we'll see how they respond. But what a way to start the game. Logan Stepp to Hunter Joseph off that nice post route. And we mentioned how good Hunter Joseph and Julian Lowe is. Both those guys making the NFL's top 100 small school prospects. And you know, every draft, a couple of those guys do stink in. Joe Sanfilippo to kick for the Cardinals. They lead 7-0. Kick is deep. And he's going to bounce. Picked up by... Muskingum returner and taken out to the 30 yard line. So a nice shallow kick. Wonder if he got caught up with the wind. But nonetheless, Muskingum's offense takes the field led by quarterback Brody Hand, the freshman who came in for the injured Dylan Strine in the opening series of that game last week against Waynesburg. He didn't have a bad game. He threw for 120 yards and ran for 48 but he had two fumbles, and you wonder if that is a testament to him being a freshman. He's got three receivers split out left, and he's in the shotgun. One to the right out here, steps back. Hand to throw over the top, and he tried to hit his receiver. It looked like he was going for Darius Hayes Carruth, the junior for Muskingum, but uh, it was good coverage there by Prince Franklin of the Cardinals. Last week, Muskingum had zero passing touchdowns last week. He o they only had two rushing touchdowns, so you got to admit, the passing game wasn't the best, but we'll hope, we'll, let's just see how Muskingum does today on their passing. Brody Han all alone in the backfield, takes a snap, throws it over. It looks like one of the offensive linemen moved a second right, early. And it is. It's going to be a false start going against offense. Muskingum. Five-yard penalty, remaining second down. So second and 15 situation, that's not one thing you want to do if you're Muskingum is move the ball backwards on your own mistakes against this Cardinal defense. They played very well last week. I believe that was an offside on Brandon Cox, uh, the center of Muskingum. So they'll be back at the 25-yard mark with 4.34 to go with Arbine leading 7-0. Brody Hand in the backfield. He's going to take this snap, second and 15, looking back to pass. Has his halfback on the run and moving out into some space and a first down. Knocks over Fred Hargrove. And that was a very good run. That was by Bernard Johnson, the sophomore. That was a good run by the, by the Muskingum Muskies to get that first down off the false start. And Otterbein, one thing they want to do is limit those big plays as much as they can here in this one. Brody Han with Bernard John Johnson standing right behind him. Ball a snap, he's gonna step back, play action, moving out to his left in a hurry and he just throws it away. That's a big, so that's th a big key for Otterbein defense. They, if you hurry up the Arms quarterback, that will limit his chances Incomplete. of passing to a, the wide open wide receiver. So I feel like if they rush the quarterback and also have good coverage, I feel like the quarterback will have very, very will struggle with uh, finding a man to get the yard. We, we mentioned that Brody Hand was not 
the starter in last week's game, came in for an injured Dylan Strine. But here he is with the starting duties today. That last pass rush was by Jay Carper. Here's Hand back to throw. Has his receiver on the side and a hard hit there, but still moving is Muskingham. That is Damon Jones on the reception for Muskingham. So Muskingham putting together a little drive of their own. They're down in the Otterbein territory. Ball is marked at the 38 yard line. So Cardinals starting to get backed up over to their own end zone. Needs an answer here, as you mentioned, maybe that answer is to bring that pass rush and frustrate this freshman quarterback. Here he is with two receivers to his right, two to his left. And Bernard Johnson, the running back in the backfield with Han. Han taking it himself, looking to pass, and he's got a man beat on the left, and it is! Touchdown, Muskingum! There appears to be a flag on the play. I don't know what that would be about. Probably will be on the defense. If the pass stands, it's a 38-yard touchdown to Damon Jones, and it would be Muskingum. The penalty is going to go Jones against the, the Muskies. But it was a nice play and a real testament to Brody Hand's athleticism for escaping that pressure and throwing it deep. Ineligible, number 16, downfield. So an ineligible man downfield. Down. The call was against... Number 16. I don't think there was a 16 on the field there. That is what he said, right? He said 16, he? Didn't said 16. He? I do not see a 16 out there. So, again, Muskingum shooting themselves in the foot here. First and 15, ball at the First and 15, line. the ball is going to be marked at the 38-yard line. Or, no, excuse me, the 43-yard line. Moved back five yards. Hand to step it. He throws it. He's got a receiver over to the right, and it just went off the hands. Oh, Right there of Joey Scott. Joey Scott. So was incomplete. But he he had him open. Prince Franklin on the coverage. Prince Charles. Franklin was the one that got beat there, but fortunate enough, the ball just went over. Joey Scott's hands just hit the tip of his fingers. A second and 15 for Muskingum. Provides a second and 15 situation for the Muskies. So Muskingum not afraid to air it out early here in this first one, Nate. I would tell you right now, I wouldn't be afraid either. If we're down by seven. This is the first game of the OAC conference. I would go up guns blazing. Hand a step back, throws, pass. Looked like it was deflected there by Steven Masters, back who had a chance on it. Steven Masters had a good game last week. Had that one strip From sack five, that provided Otterbein a chance to take the lead. He had five tackles last week. Three and a half for a loss and two sacks. And he's mentioning that forced fumble he had. He started three games last year, played in all ten, but his name is the starter here this season for the Cardinals. And we're hoping that he can stay healthy too because he is quite the outside linebacker. And uh, we mentioned Muskingum hitting this Otterbein defensive backs early. They had four interceptions last Muskingham. week, this defensive back squad for the Cardinals so I'm, I'm intrigued that they're uh, that they're testing them out but it looks like it's worked for them so far they hit that touchdown that was called back for an illegal man on the field we're gonna have our first time out here but what do you like out of Muskingum's offense so far Nate I like the fact that they are leaving wide open. Uh, I like the fact that the wide receivers are well open, you know, because three times they only passed to three wide receivers. One was touchdown, which was called for an illegal man. The, three, uh, the two other times, just simple mistakes, split butterfingers, I guess. But mostly they've been passing and not running it. So I feel like they will be looking more to passing in this case, which is th third and 15. I feel like they could pass. If they run, ho hopefully they get. Uh, hope the Otterbein defense will stop them from the run, but looks like they're just going to pass. Third and long for Brody Han. He steps back to pass. He's looking downfield, doesn't find anybody. Rolling out to his right, finds a receiver screaming up, and he was looking for Joey Scott, but it went off to his fingertips once again, and it would have been a first oh, down run. and a nice Number play by Brody Han to escape pressure, but it looks like he we'll just missed his receiver just a little bit. He's got to throw that more in the bread basket, and then that's a first and ten. But punt team out in the field for Muskingum. 
that was the fourth consecutive the uh, drop we had there. Was four. One was a touchdown, like you said, but three other times they dropped the ball. So I feel like this need the wide receivers need to learn or need to focus on catching the ball first. Julian Lowe back to receive this punt for the Cardinals. Muskingum punting at their own 43-yard line. Snap is good. Punt is away. And Julian Lowe is going to fair catch it. And it's going to be marked at about the 8-yard line. So nice punt there by Muskingum. Playing it smart. Forcing Otterbein back in their own territory. But aren't we excited to see Otterbein's offense back on the field after that last play? One play went for 55 yards. Logan stepped to Hunter Joseph for the score. They lead 7-0, 12.56 remaining in the opening quarter. Just their second drive of the day. Let's see how the Muskingum defense responds. Logan step back in the shotgun. With Isaiah Richmond standing right behind him. Ball is snapped. Hand off to Richmond. Richmond has got some space. Excuse me, that's Christian Johnson on the carry. He gets a couple carry by number four, down Christian to the 10-yard line. It's going to be second and nine. But Otterbein's got Trayvon quite Burke. a few weapons number on offense. And they worked in a couple running backs between Christian Johnson and Isaiah Richmond last week, Nate. And that's a real strength for them. Here's Logan Stepp to take the ball himself on a quarterback draw. He's got some space and a first down for sure, but he's brought down Logan right around the 23-yard line. A nice carry for Logan Stepp. We mentioned that last week he was the leading rusher for the Cardinals. With, took 22 attempts. There's his first of the day. Moves the chains for a first and 10. I got to tell you, a good quarterback can not only pass, but know when to run. And, you know, he's just ran that for pretty good. And last week he, led, like you said, led the team in rushing. So I got to tell you, he's going to be a really, really good player, a key player Step for the offense today. One, nice Joseph. throw over to Hunter Joseph right at the chains. Looks like it's going to be a first and ten. Otterbein moving the ball with ease in the opening plays of this second down. drive. First and ten for Otterbein at their own 35. Logan Step in the backfield with Christian Johnson. Ball snap, play action. Over to Hunter Joseph, he's got a man, but looked like it went just over his head. Hunter Joseph got up there, but maybe he heard footsteps coming from the Muskingum defensive back. That's Dimitri Turner on the coverage for the Muskies. So second and 10 at their own 35 yard line. Cardinals, Logan Stepp. Christian Johnson to his left, ball is snap, play action. Taking his time back, he's got Hunter Joseph over the middle on a nice dig route and some space to run. Muskingum chasing him down and tackles him right at the 30 yard line, but not before. They move the chains for a first and 10. Otterbein moving the ball with ease through the air right now. I gotta tell you what, again, if you have Logan Stepp and if you have J Julian Lau, I'll tell you what, they can make some pretty impressive plays. Both times that they were, first play, Julian Lau, touchdown. Second game, the second time they came up, he got a good, a pretty good miles, a pretty good yards to, that was passed. So I gotta tell you what, those two are gonna be the big impact for this game for our Cardinals, our offense. Josh Partinger in motion. Now over on the left side, Logan Stepp to hand off to Christian Johnson. He's got some room on the right. And a nice gain of about five there, and that's what you expect out of a running back when you hand the ball off to him. That's what a coach would really like is when a running back can pick up four or five yards every time you hand it off to him. And a lot of that is based off the offensive work on the line. And uh, a lot of questions going into this year about Otterbein's offensive line, but it looks like they've performed so far. They got the win last week, not letting Logan Stepp get sacked very often. Step in the backfield. Second and five. Play action, moving out to the right. Has a man deep. He was, looks like he was looking for Julian Lowe, but ball just sailed over his head. It's going to be Otterbein's first third down situation. Let's see what they go with here. They converted quite often last week. As we mentioned, this is the first game of the OAC. No team out of the OAC is playing this week other than the Cardinals and the Muskies, and that game's taking place right here at Memorial Stadium 
in Westerville, Ohio. Christian Johnson to the left of Logan Stepp. Third and five situation. Step to snap. Dropping back. Has some time. Moves out to his right. Looks like he was. Oh, pass was intercepted. Flag in the backfield. But not before it's taken back. And all the way down to the 44-yard line. Let's see what this flag is. It's likely going to go against the Cardinals. It was thrown in the backfield. But if the play stands, that's Logan Stepp's first interception of the year. Looked like he was looking for Josh Pleininger. Yep, penalty's going to go against the offense, so Muskingum will happily take the ball back. And that's a testament to Muskingum's defense. Good coverage on the play. It was a nice dig route, but it was taken up nicely by the Muskingum backfield. And now they got the ball here, Nate, with a chance to try to even this game back up on their second drive of the day. A nice crowd on hand today at Memorial Stadium. It is beautiful college football weather. The kind of football weather you dream for in the opening week or opening couple weeks of the college football season. Hand off. Hand to his receiver, Damon Jones. So a nice jet route, but there's going to be a flag down on the far sideline. We'll see who this goes against. It's going to be holding on Muskingum. So as you can see, they're not afraid to run that jet route. Damon Jones, the senior for the Muskingum Four, offense, can do a lot for Muskingum. That penalty's going to go against Muskingum. And they're going to move the ball back. Ball started at the 44-yard line. It's going to be marked down at the 36. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Here's Brody Han in the backfield. Bernard Johnson motioning his receiver from right to left. Ball snap. Han steps back. Throws. He's got a man, but a nice play by Fred Hargrove to dive in and break up that pass. Nice play there by Hargrove. He had two interceptions last week for the Cardinals. We mentioned this defensive backfield is not one to mess with. They had four interceptions last week as a unit. Chris Bevins, the transfer senior. Safety had one. Brandon Pascal, the freshman, had an interception for the Cardinals. And Fred Hargrove had two. He breaks up that pass there, which force is a second and 20 situation for Muskingum. Or excuse me, second and 18. Nonetheless, Muskingum is going to want a first down here to try to even this game up. Hand to step back. He's with the pocket collapsing. He's got a man deep, and he looks like he just overthrew him. That pass was intended for Darius Hayes Carruth. Muskingum really not afraid to air it out here at all. We'll see what that running game does later on, see if they rely on that move to it or if they try to continue to pass. Yeah, they've been stuck in with the passing, so I feel I feel like they should switch up and try to go over for running, but obviously not now because they have third and 18 with the ball at the 36. Yeah, this is not a good situation for running. You're absolutely right. Maybe a screen play. We'll see. This is an experienced out of Ryan defensive line. They're not fooled easily. Motioning his receiver from right to left. His hand stepping back. Play action pass is tackled quickly in the backfield by Steven Masters. A nice play off an offensive line blitz. And he gets the sack there for the Cardinals and forces a four and out. Last week, Steven Masters had... One forced fumble, two sacks. And he played well last week. He did. I'm very impressed. So he, today he started with a sack, so I'm very uh, excited to see what he can do today. Julian Lowe to receive for the Cardinals. A nice three and out there for the Otterbein defense to put that Otterbein offense back on the field. They still lead this game 7-0. That kick is away. And out to Julian Lowe, who's going to actually return this one, but he muffed the punt, picking it up. And evading the first tackler, finding some space over to the left, over close to the sideline, but was not before he was brought down by They Must Skingham. Effort there, and a good job by the Cardinals to force that three and out. Julian Lowe avoiding a hazardous situation for the Cardinals after he muffed that punt. But nonetheless, they, they take possession back at the 22-yard line, or excuse me, their own 17. So Otterbein backed up. 
to their own territory again. They moved the ball quite well, but not before an interception was thrown by Logan Stepp. And Muskingum had the ball back. Otterbein sticking with that familiar shotgun look. Motioning Josh Pontinger from right to left. Ball snapped. Hand off to Isaiah Richmond, but he's tackled very quickly in the backfield. That tackle is going to go to Tim Oosley, the sophomore for Muskingum. Also two on the play. We mentioned Isaiah Richmond, Kristen Johnson splitting a lot of time last week at the halfback position. Kristen Johnson, the smaller running back, quicker in between gaps. Isaiah Richmond, that bigger third down running back that you like to have on the field. Step in the backfield. Snap. Hand off to Richmond. Finds a hole and some more and gains for a nice first down. But he's tackled Isaiah by his shoestrings, but not before he gets all the way out to the 32-yard line. Nice carry by Richmond. Like you said, running backs shouldn't be averaging over 15 yards. They should be averaging about four or five yards, but he surely got over 10 yards, and that was a very good play for the Auburn Cardinals, which they needed dearly. Step in the backfield. Play action, keeps it himself, throws it quickly to Julian Lowe. And a nice job to escape the sack there and get the ball off quickly. He had Julian Lowe, his slot receiver, on a nice hitch route. 11, and right when you thought maybe he was about to be brought down for a tackle for loss, he got that ball off quickly and ends up turning some positive yards. Otterbein out to the 40-yard line. Still on their side of the 50, but a second and three situation. Step with a hard count. Otterbein resetting. Ball snapped. Play action. He's got Julian Lowe out there to the right. And a hard hit on the sideline. But not before he made the catch. It's a nice job by Julian Lowe to not be afraid of that defensive back coming out there. He stands up just fine. Or no, he's motioning the receiver in. Looks like maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. He's coming off the field. Dean Superlek, the junior, on the field for the Cardinals. Oh, no, he sends right off. Some confusion on the sideline. Cardinals not sure what personnel to put in. Dean Supelek is going to replace Julian Lowe there, but not before Julian Lowe got that catch to move Otterbein on the, the other side of the 50. Step, rolling back, has some time and some space, decides to keep it and move for a few there. Otterbein's offensive line doing a good job not letting Muskingum collapse that pocket. We mentioned Chris Weck on the defensive end. For Muskingum being Defensive Player of the Week in the OAC. That time, that play looked like Step decided to take it. That's a testament to Muskingum's defensive back. A lot of those coverage sacks can force. Logan Step doesn't usually throw the ball into pressure. He only threw three interceptions last year and 18 touchdowns. He had a good year last year. Step taking his time back, has Hunter Joseph on the side and a nice catch along the sideline. It's going to be ruled no catch. He was tiptoeing that sideline. But the line judge is going to step in and rule that one out of bounds. But a nice play there. It was a nice look. And we're going to see that a lot today. Logan Stepp looking for Julian Lowe and Hunter Joseph for some deep balls. Third and seven situation for the Cardinals. They're on Muskingum's side of the 50. Looking to score and extend their lead. They lead 7-0 in this one. Isaiah Richmond in the backfield. Ball is snapped. Logan dropping back. Finds his receiver of the middle. It's Julian Lowe who stood right back in after taking one playoff on a nice dig route there. He moves the chains for a Cardinal first down. He's going to be a big factor today again. Brian you know, he, he right now he has Brown over 30 yards with a couple of touches. And Logan Stepp, who's stepping his game up from the interception he had earlier today. But that didn't seem like to worry him because the defense brought it back. And Auburn has the ball now with five minutes and 35 seconds left. Julian Lowe led the conference last year with 56 receptions. Had nine receptions last week for the Cardinals. He's got a few today. That one, a big one to move the chains. First and 10, Otterbein in Muskingum territory. Hand off to Johnson. And he's going to be stood up very quickly by Muskingum's defensive line. 
Isaiah Richmond and Christian Johnson both in on that play. Christian Johnson was in the backfield. Isaiah Richmond was split out as a slot receiver. Number 44, Chris Weck. So Otterbein moving some personnel around, trying to get some different looks and confuse this Muskingum defense. Isaiah Richmond's going to stick in in the backfield. So Christian Johnson came on the field, went for a half-yard run. It's going to be second and nine for the Cardinals. Logan Step, half quarterback draw, evades the first tackler and his second. A nice spin move, and he just kind of runs like he is on ice, doesn't he? He's kind of skating through. And he's going to get close to the first down marker. They're going to mark him short. It's going to be third and about a half-yard situation for Otterbein. They're down on Muskingum 16. So they're looking to score and extend their lead. They lead 7-0. Step, hands it off to Richmond. Richmond's got the first down and some more and was brought down right about the five yard line. Nice run by Richmond. Otterbein looking to score. Putting Muskingum against their own back. 4-12 is what shows in the opening quarter of this one. Otterbein leads 7-0. Otterbein taking no time to get back in formation. No huddle offense there. Step, oh, bad snap. Logan dropping back, trying to gain some yards back. And what could have been a 10-yard loss only turns a, into a one-yard loss. And those are kind of the hidden yardage battles that you try to stress as a football coach. You know, you've got to win those hidden yards. And right there, what could have been a 10-yard loss, Logan Step turned into only about a one-yard loss. And that's... One of those things that doesn't really show on a highlight tape, but it means a lot. Otterbein second and goal from the eight-yard line after that mishap between the center and quarterback. Stepping back, he's got a Hunter Joseph over on the slant route. Touchdown, Otterbein. That's the second time those two have connected on the day. Third, not to mention, though, Logan Steps' fourth passing touchdown. And Otterbein fans hearing that familiar Cardinal fight song. They get another one here in the opening quarter. They lead 13 to nothing. Point after Joseph Sanfilippo with Lucas Usley to hold. Kick is up, but just right, no good. So Otterbein has the lead 13 to nothing after that missed point after by Joseph Sanfilippo. Nonetheless, Otterbein moves the ball very effectively. And they really have done so on three drives in a row. They just didn't get that one there because of that interception. But Logan Step comes right back. Otterbein moves the ball very efficiently and finds Hunter Joseph on that nice slant route. What did you like out of Otterbein's offense on that drive, Nate? Well, for one, the one play that they could have turned into a fumble or a 10-yard loss was very, very important. So I'm glad that Logan Stepp did not hesitate or was panicking to get the ball. But another thing is that their passing game of this Otterbein's offense is very, 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 very tough to guard. The, court, the wide receiver is Julian Lowe and uh, Hunter Joseph here. Both of those are, both of those wide receivers are very important to this game. Without them, I probably would say they wouldn't be having the lead right now as they are. But definitely, definitely, the key to this game appears to be throwing to one of those two wide receivers as anything else. Logan Stepp's favorite targets are Hunter Joseph and Julian Lowe. Last year, Hunter Joseph had 777 yards, led the OAC in reception yards. To return are the Muskies. A nice. Evasive move to avoid that tackle there. Gets Muskingum out to the 22-yard line. Otterbein's defense back on the field after that nice three and out. If you're not paying attention to some of the Big Ten scores and you're only watching this game, Michigan leads at halftime over Cincinnati 17-7. Wisconsin and Florida Atlantic just started the third quarter. Wisconsin leads that one 24-14. Over in the ACC, Louisville... Holding strong against North Carolina. They just scored a field goal, 27-14. They lead. Kansas State, ranked number 19 against Charlotte, leads their game 38-7. Hand off hand. Play action. Keeps it himself. Was looking to pass, but not before he's brought down by Stephen Carpenter. Nice gain there by hand. Carried by number 10, Brody Hahn. 
And he can run the ball too. He ran for 48 yards and a touchdown last week. He fumbled the ball twice last week against Waynesburg. There's going to be a penalty. It's going to go against Fred Hargrove for the Cardinals. Personal foul. And one thing football coaches don't like, it's personal fouls. <laughs> Definitely not. They're giving them easy yardage and getting closer to the, to the touchdown line. So I feel like that's the coach for right now is very, very upset about the penalty. But hopefully the defense will make it up by stopping this play. Otterbein was not penalized very much in last week's game at Ohio Wesleyan. Hahn back to snap. Play action, rolling left and keeping the ball himself. He's going to get a nice 13-yard gain there for the Muskies. So Brody Hahn clearly showing he can run and pass. He's had a tough time in the air, though. Missed a couple targets. What would have been some big gains for the Muskies on the last possession. And you wonder if you flip-flop some of the receivers on this team, if Brody Hahn would be having a similar game to Logan Stepp. Both these quarterbacks kind of play similar styles with their dual-threat abilities. In the backfield, Bernard Johnson to his left. Stepping back. It's a ooh, almost intercepted there by Jake Harper. Nice job to break that ball up. Broken up by number 33, Jake Harper. Muskingum faced the second and ten. Man, they don't really run the ball very much to their halfback, do they? They a lot of their offense seems to run through Brody Hahn. Both teams are looking to pass more than rushing, so. I would say that would be the key of the game, so I wouldn't expect anything else but passing this during the games. Brody Hahn, the freshman out of Louisville, Kentucky, leading this Muskingum defense. They're 1-0 in the year. They beat Waynesburg last week 19-0. Hahn back to snap. Looking for a receiver downfield. He's got one. And a nice catch there, finally, by the receiver. Darius Hayes Carruth has been targeted a couple times. He's missed a couple passes, but he gets that one there and finally moves the chains for the Muskies. They're looking to score. They've been in Otterbein territory before, but yet to get on the scoreboard. 155 is what shows on the clock. It is ticking down here in the opening quarter. Like we mentioned, it is a beautiful college football Saturday here in Westerville, Ohio at Memorial Stadium. Brody Hahn in the backfield. On a bubble screen over to Darius Hayes Carruth, who gets some yards and a nice stiff arm there to get him a couple more. He's going to be close to the first down marker. It looked like he was marked down two yards short. Prince Franklin on the defensive effort to force Hayes Carruth out of bounds. But Muskingum's offense looking to score. They're, they're certainly... On the brink of it, here now in the red zone with a second and short situation. Brody Hahn in the backfield in the shotgun formation. Handoff, he keeps it himself, has some space through a tackler. And a nice first down there, moving the chains. It's going to be a first and ten. Ball marked down at the 14-yard line. Muskingum moving the ball very well. Otterbein has yet to have an answer for that dual threat kind of option pass slash option keep. Muskingum is running over there. It's worked for them quite well. They're down well into Otterbein territory here on the 14-yard line. First and 10. Hahn stepping back, looking for a receiver. Keeps it himself again. Moves the tackler and finds the corner. End zone. Touchdown. Nope. They're going to mark him short. It looked like he had the corner there. He almost had if he would have stretched that ball out. Maybe a little more. Maybe a good decision to hold on to that one, though. He had two fumbles last week. Yet to put the ball on the turf today. And Muskingum fans here hoping that he keeps that ball in his hands when he does decide to run it. But we just mentioned he's the dual threat kind of quarterback that can really pose a threat to this Otterbein defense. Otterbein with a heavy defensive package now. Hahn to hand off to Bernard Johnson. The ball was on the turf. And Otterbein's going to have the ball. Wow, Muskingum down on the first and goal, down on the second two-yard line. And right when we mentioned them not fumbling the ball, they fumble it. What's with that, Nate? That's crazy. I have no idea, but I would, if I was the offensive coordinator right now or even the head coach, I would be very upset because Muskingum has been on the, on 
close to the touchdown line twice, more probably three times, but yet has got a touchdown during this quarter. And it's only 15.6 seconds left, 13 nothing Cardinals. If it was me, I mean, I would be very, very upset because right now, the, but the Audubon Cardinals is, has the ball at their second with the first down 10. Let's see what Lo, Lo, uh, Logan Stepp can do for the Audubon's offense. Waning seconds of the opening quarter. Otterbein has possession. They gave up a safety last week when they were down on their own goal line. Hand off to Johnson. He moves around the first tackler. And, and he doesn't give very much. So Otterbein kind of pinned back on their own territory. But they do have the football, and that's the most important thing. Muskingum was really looking to score. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Here at Memorial Stadium, Otterbein leads this one 13 to nothing. A good quarter by the Otterbein Cardinals. They made a couple mistakes. Personal foul and an interception. But they answered back to both those things and now have possession with a chance to extend this lead to three scores. They've moved the ball very efficiently today, Nate. And I'm not expecting that to change. Otterbein returning all starters from last week. Was fortunate not to have any major injuries. That's always a concern, especially with how fast-paced football is nowadays. It seems like every game of college football, there's at least one or two guys down on the turf with a serious injury. So far, none today. We hope that continues. Football is a very aggressive sport. And high school numbers are starting to go down as parents deciding to play their players and their kids in different sports. Is it good for other sports? Bad for football, though. You wonder what kind of changes football will make over the years. It'll be a slow process, but football certainly Maybe on the decline here as health concerns, especially with former NFL players and their CTE confessions coming out. Otterbein with possession here. We're playing football here at Memorial Stadium. Step, stepping back, has Hunter Joseph deep. Hunter Joseph with the reception, breaks the first tackler. But a nice second effort. He gets down to the 50-yard line. A nice pass there, 50-yard Reception. Hunter Joseph has over 100 yards on the day already. And he's shaken up. He was tackled right there at the ankles. Looked like he was going to break a tackle. But it was a good effort there by the Muskingum defense. That was Troshin Kanea, the cornerback, after he got beat deep, prevented the Otterbein score. Logan Stepp, handoff to Johnson. Johnson has some space. Open field, nice tackle there by Muskingum to prevent that one. That was Mick Fischel, the senior, preventing the score there. Otterbein moving the ball really well here in the opening plays this second quarter. They're down in Muskingum territory, first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Step, hand off to Johnson, moves over to the left, gains a couple yards. Nice second effort to get the couple. Looked like he was stopped back at the line of scrimmage, but he forced his way down for two more. Otterbein coming out very aggressively here in this second quarter, moving the ball well, some big plays. And Otterbein looking to extend that lead. They're down in Muskingum territory. And no huddle offense, very familiar to Otterbein fans. Step in the backfield. Hand off to Johnson, he gets about one. So Muskingum's defensive line doing a good job stopping these quick shotgun halfback dives so that Otterbein has decided to run back to back. You wonder why they decided not to pass it after having that big 50 yard reception. Maybe to give the receivers a little breather here for this third and long. Otterbein certainly in field goal territory. Joseph Sanfilippo, as in his third year starting for the Cardinals, that kicker can certainly make this one. It would be a 47-yard field goal, but Step dropping back has plenty. Jerry's going to throw another interception. A flag is going to come down. Probably will be defensive holding. 
But if it stands, it's going to be a second interception for Muskingum's defense. I think this one's going to be brought back, though. Step was looking for tight end senior Noah Durst on the play. Looks like he was held up a little bit. We're going to hear the call here. Officials discussing that midfield. It is. It'll be pass interference on the defense. Tough break for Muskie. It's going to provide a first down for the Cardinals. That was a very close one there. I mean, that was that was at the 40-yard mark that Logan Stepp stopped him, but that could have converted to a touchdown with just one intercept, two, a second interception there. But luckily right now they're back at the 28-yard mark, and hopefully they can regain and try something different this time. Absolutely right, Nate. Otterbein catching a nice break there. Number nine, spot foul, automatic first down. That one's going to go against Mick Fischel. On the pass interference, he had the touchdown saving tackle on Christian Johnson earlier this drive. But well, Otterbein moving the ball really well here, and you really like to see that. If you're a Cardinal parent or fan, thank you tuning in. This is Otterbein TV. First OAC matchup of the season between the Cardinals and Muskies. Looks like we're going to have a timeout here called by Otterbein. First charge, timeout. The owner of a silver Lexus, license plate 22CW. Your engine is smoking. That is a silver Lexus, license 22CW. Your engine is smoking in the parking lot. Uh, PA announcer here at Memorial Stadium just announced there's a car smoking out in the parking lot. Memorial Stadium is a no smoking zone. So uh, please take your smoking cars elsewhere. <laughs> Certainly don't wish any car troubles. It's a beautiful college football Saturday. I can't stress this enough, folks. If you're not here with us in Westerville, you're probably at the Ohio State Buckeyes game if you're not. It is a beautiful college Saturday, a beautiful day to tailgate, too, if you are downtown and listening to this one. It's always fun to see the students come out and support the Cardinals. Otterbein leads the conference in attendance. Hand off to Richmond. Doesn't get much there. Memorial Stadium, such a great college football atmosphere. One of the best in the OAC. You know, it's, it's, it's hard when you compare it to a place like Ohio Stadium downtown. Uh, Division, Division I football doesn't quite compare to Division III football on many levels, but Otterbein certainly compared to other OAC, con or other, o other OAC conference teams does have one of the better atmospheres. I just mentioned that they rank out of the 250-something Division III teams, Otterbein ranks top 30 in attendance. And a lot of that is a testament to the town that they play in. Step dropping back. Has Hunter Joseph. Touchdown, Cardinals. Third of the half. And fourth of the receiving season for Hunter Joseph. That's his third reception. Touchdown. What a day for the Cardinals. Man, they just can't stop it. Third touchdown of the day. And they're holding strong to this lead, extending it drive after drive, 19 to nothing. Logan Step with a nice passing touchdown to Hunter Joseph on the out route. That is his third touchdown of the day. That unsportsmanlike conduct is going to go against Julian Lowe. Julian Lowe is quite the character out there on the field. Very expressive. Really good captain has that kind of leadership that to rile up the team and get him pumped up for the game. And uh, he's certainly excited. Julian Lowe and Hunter Joseph worked very closely together in the offseason, spending a lot of their time at D1 Sports. It's a, if you don't know what that is, it's an indoor facility just off 23 here in Columbus. They spent a lot of time together. 
Hunter Joseph from New Philadelphia High School. Up near the Cleveland area, closer that way. Folks unfamiliar with New Philadelphia. Julian Lowe right here from Columbus, Ohio. He went to Gehanna Lincoln High School. Both Joseph and Lowe seniors here at Otterbein, as we mentioned, those guys on the top 100 small school NFL prospects for the Cardinals. You know, sometimes those guys, sometimes guys from Division Three, do sneak into the draft. I'm very, then that's very good for them because most players from Division Three do not go into the draft room or even play professional football. But that would be a very outstanding way to represent your school from a Division Three standpoint. But definitely an, a very impact for you as a player to go into the draft. It's kind of hard to get that kind of national attention when you do play at the Division Three level with all the hype around Division One and and then Division Two. But Hunter Joseph would certainly be making his case here with three reception touchdowns. Back to receive is the Muskies. A nice hit there by the Otterbein the Cardinals. So Muskegon will take over. They trail this game 19 to nothing, or excuse me, 20 to nothing after the point after. Otterbein meeting that expectation of just solid play you expect them to have this year after returning so many guys, after returning Logan Stepp at quarterback, returning Julian Lowe at receiver, Hunter Joseph, Christian Johnson, returning so many guys on defense, you expect them to really have a good season. Tim Daup in his sixth year here for the Cardinals. Brought them to 5-5 five and five last year, 4-6 and six the year before. They've been middle of the road these past four seasons under Tim Daup. The first season Daup took over, Otterbein was 8-2. and two. Top half of that conference didn't quite make the playoffs. They were just one game shy. And the OAC usually putting a couple teams in the playoffs every year. As of recently, it's been Mount Union. That tough program. This pass over to the side to Bernard Johnson. It's going to go for a first down. Muskingum moving the football. But Otterbein, if any team can break out and make the playoffs, it's this Otterbein Cardinals team. If they stay healthy and continue to execute, man, they can be quite the threat in the OAC. This Muskingum team is not a bad football team. They won last week's game 19 to nothing against Waynesburg. It's a Muskingum program that had their first home opener shutout since 2001. We mentioned Muskingum was 4-6 and six last year, so they're still trying to get over that hump. Handoff to Bernard Johnson is going to go for one. They trail this game 20 to nothing. They've had a chance to get a touchdown and keep this game close. I mean, Otterbein leads this one. But it certainly doesn't feel like it's out of hand. Muskingum's moved the ball very effectively here in this game. And they're going to continue to try to do so. A lot of that is a testament to Brody Hahn, the freshman quarterback for the Muskies. They have possession here at the 48-yard line. Hahn moving Bernard Johnson out to the right. It's going to be a quarterback draw. He'll keep it himself. And he's going to try to get around the first tackler. But it was uh, two Cardinals on the play. Jake Harper and Fred Hargrove who came in for the nice tackle. Otterbein's defense posting up a shutout so far. Knock on wood, they keep it the same. 9.30 is what shows here on the scoreboard at Memorial Stadium. It is such a beautiful afternoon. Can't really get much perfect than this. Not too hot, not too cold. You'd be just fine in a t-shirt. You'd be just fine in a, in a hoodie. If you were out here watching this one, Brody Hahn to step back. Nice pass there through some tight coverage. That pass is complete. Is it going to move the chains? Ranger Long, the tight end, the junior, had that reception. It's going to get down to the 39-yard line. So Muskingum again, moving the ball in Otterbein territory. Still yet to score here. They've made some... Some crucial mistakes. 
including that fumble down on the one yard line that turned into an otter by 99 yard drive. Muskingum handoff here to Bernard Johnson. He's got some space and around a couple tacklers brought down by Chris Bevins. Not before he gets down to the 18 yard line. Chris Bevins with the tackle. He's coming right off the field onto the sidelines. Blaine Voorhees, the junior, stepping onto the field for the Cardinals. He's, Blaine Voorhees, the strong safety, started last week for the Cardinals. Split some time with Chris Bevins. The D1 transfer, Chris Bevins, made the tackle there, came off the sidelines. Brody Hahn. To keep the ball, he was hit hard in the backfield by Fred Hargrove. That was the defensive backfield, that is. Brody Hahn did move the football there. It's going to be second and five. They're down at the 14-yard line. And again, poking to score. It's 20 to nothing. They'd really like a score here to keep this game within reach. Again, if you're, if you're watching this game closely, you'll be able to tell it really doesn't feel like a blowout, but the score would show otherwise. Brody Hahn, pitched out to his man, Bernard Johnson. It was a nice tackle there by Fred Hargrove. Man, he's been all over the field for the Cardinals on this drive. Muskingum. Once again in Otterbein territory, they've yet to break the plane and score that touchdown. They had one called back on their opening drive. Here they are, third and three. They were one for 14 last week on third downs. Brody Hahn back to step, picked off by Brandon Pascal. Another crucial mistake for Muskingum. Leads to an Otterbein possession. Brandon Pascal with his second interception of the season. He's a freshman defensive back. He gets the ball for the Cardinals. They lead this one 20 to nothing. Muskingum making some bad mistakes deep in Otterbein territory. That's the thing there. Their offense is not that bad, but once they get close to the, the end zone, they, set, they tend to just... They've struggled. Yeah, they struggle. I don't know what what they're gonna be doing for the net for the rest of the game, but definitely been struggling since then. Hotterbein looking very well here on this Saturday afternoon. Handoff, new running back in. That's Dakota Booby Smith is what they call him, and he's known here throughout campus. He's the senior running back who had a tough tough year last year exited the season with a concussion and actually went to Tim Daup and said you know what I'm not going to play football anymore but here he is back playing for the Cardinals and I think he can run just as well as Richmond and Johnson he got some time last week and getting some time here Logan set play action pass has Peyton Vandercoy but just missed him pass was thrown at the ankles not complete. Peyton Vandercoy, returning receiver for the Cardinals in his senior season. Or excuse me, he's in his junior season. Senior in school. Junior on the field. That pass was over the middle. You see Peyton Vandercoy run those dig routes a lot last year. A lot of times he can move the yards. He had three reception. Touchdowns last season, one big one, one long touchdown pass last week for the Cardinals. Third and long situation for the Cardinals. Logan Stepp taking the ball himself, tries to move around a tackler. He does. He's going to get close to the first down, and they're going to mark him just past it. New set of chains for the Cardinals. Nice move there by Logan Stepp to keep the football moving. Yard line, looking to move on to Smithy, and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage maybe gets one on a second effort there Cardinals again continuing to move the football Otterbein wearing the white helmets red jerseys red pants with white numbers tan trim Muskingum in those black hats white jerseys red numbers and black pants with black trim 
Second and nine situation, Otterbein at the 24. Step with two halfbacks in the backfield. First look that they've done this all day. Smith to his right. Looks like it's Johnson to his left. Hand off to Johnson. Oh, no, he's going to keep it himself. Step. Fighting for a couple there. Logan Steps had a nice day on the ground. That's his sixth attempt. He's gone for 36 yards. It was the leading rusher for Otterbein last week. He's the leading rusher so far today. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Cardinals lead 20 to nothing here at Memorial Stadium in Westerville, Ohio. Beautiful Saturday college football. Logan Stepp looking, just deciding to dump it out. No, keeps it himself. Pump fake over ahead. Flag down on the field. That one's thrown right at the line of scrimmage. We'll see what this looks like. It's going to be holding on the Cardinals. Looks like it's going to go against Peter LaChapelle. And he's signaling over to the sideline. Yep, yep, that's me. That's me. You really, you really don't experience Division Three football the same way if you don't go to school here. A lot of people in these stands know these players very closely. It really is kind of that tight family feel when you go to such a small school. Otterbein only with an, enro an enrollment just over 3,000. Much smaller than that school downtown, Ohio State with close to like 50,000 undergraduates. It is a different it is a different feel here. To punt is San Filippo and to receive is Damon Jones for the Muskies. Avoids the first tackler, avoids the second, but is brought down not before he gets to his own 42-yard line. And Ohio State has one of the top football teams in the country right now. And I got to tell you, with one of the best schools in the country, also having the best football team in the best country, you know, that's pretty impressive with a bigger school as Ohio State. But talking about this small school feel, I know Nate knows a few players on the team. I know I'm really close to a few guys. And off to Johnson. Goes for five and down to the 46-yard line. If you're not paying attention to the Michigan and Cincinnati game, Cincinnati just made this one interesting. They only trail 17-14, to 14 and they got the ball looking to punt. Will and Spate for Michigan through those back-to-back -back pick sixes last week. He's 10 for 16, 119 yards and a touchdown for Michigan. But we're here at Memorial Stadium where Bernard Johnson has stood up. It's going to be a third and five situation for the Muskies. Otterbein leads this one 20 to nothing. Three minutes left on the clock here in the first half. It's been a fun one so far. We've seen Otterbein make those big plays, and we've also seen them move the ball slowly. Um, it's been everything you expect out of Otterbein's offense, aside from an interception by Logan Stepp which we've almost forgot about with the three touchdowns he's thrown today. Pass to Bernard Johnson. It's going to be a halfback pass. It was looking for Damon Jones. It was a halfback pass drawn up almost perfectly. But Damon Jones just dropped it, and that would have been a huge momentum shifter for the Muskies. If they would have gotten that touchdown, they still trail this one 20 to nothing. And they're putting that punt team on the field. Man, Muskingum just has yet to catch a break. That's a big thing. They need to focus in, and their offense needs to just dial down because right now they've dropped a lot of balls thrown by the quarterback today. But it's just simple mistakes from the wide receivers. That's senior Damon Jones who dropped that almost perfect pass. And you wonder... You know, a lot of times when you're in that situation and you just got the ball sitting in the air like that, it's almost one of those things that just seems like it's too good to be true, and you just you just slip it right through your fingers. I bet the quarterback but, right now is very, very, I wouldn't say uh, upset, but very unpleased about the, the attempt that they had just there. An unlikely situation there for Damon Jones to drop that ball. 
But Otterbein fans certainly don't mind it. Their team takes possession at the 23-yard line. A chance to put some points on the board. They got 237 on the clock here. Plenty of time for Otterbein to move the ball downfield, especially with the star power that they have on their side. Hunter Joseph split out here at the bottom of your screen. Hand off to Johnson. Johnson moving around the first tackler. Couldn't get around the second. Stood up. Looks like he's going to get to the line of scrimmage, if that. It's going to be second and ten for the Cardinals. They're still at their own 23-yard line. Coach Moore down here on the bench, if you can see it on your screen, rallying his defense up. They've done a good job so far, not letting up any points. They had a little mishap there with the halfback pass, a little trickery by Muskingum. Was fortunate enough to drop the football. Fortunate for the Cardinals. Second and ten for situation. Logan Step play action. Dropping back, keeping the ball himself. He's going to get across the first down marker and into some space. He's got some speed all alone. Ten, five, touchdown, Ottermine. Huge play there by Logan Step. What an amazing quarterback he is. He, he knows when to throw, and again, he knows when to run. That was a play that he knew what to do, and now the Otterbein Cardinals lead 26 to nothing with, at the second quarter with 145 to go. He runs for a big 76-yard touchdown there, and he extends the lead for the Cardinals. They lead this one 26 to nothing with a point after. That's three touchdowns on in the air, one on the ground, four overall. That kick is up, and it's going to go good. Otterbein leads 27 to nothing here at Memorial Stadium. The fans certainly pleased with the Cardinals' effort so far today. They look really sharp, don't they, Nate? Oh, definitely. Now, if I was a Muskingum fan, I would be kind of worried because well, their offense is not really particularly the type of uh, compared to Auburn Cardinals, but they've been they've been doing some stuff that could have led to a touchdown, but just very really short today. But if I was an Auburn Cardinal fan, I would definitely be pleased by the results here. But you know, anything can happen in the second half. But definitely, I'm very pleased of what's going on in the first half. That run by Logan Step just put him over a hundred yards on the day. On the ground, he's passed for 208. Just had incredible numbers so far in this opening half. Video game type numbers, you would say, for those who play Madden. Bring back NCAA football. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> for those who are watching don't know what we're talking about, NCAA football is a video game. I'm sure a lot of these kids on this team remember. I remember I had the last NCAA game I had was NCAA 14. I forget who was on the cover of that one. It was a, it was a Michigan quarterback. I'm totally, oh, I'm totally uh, blanking. Denard Robinson. Denard Robinson. Yeah, Denard Robinson was on the cover. Um, for those who haven't been following closely to college football, as of recently, a lot of a lot of NCAA athletes voicing their opinions on whether they should get paid or not. EA Sports was the game developer for NCAA. They made a lot of money selling that that game with with college football teams that had players on the video game, not with the same names as the real college football players, but with the same likeness. Here's a nice run by Bernard Johnson, trying to spark some momentum. In the waning minutes of the opening half, Muskingum really needs to score here if they want to keep this one interesting. They are losing right now 27 to nothing. Otterbein with a great home opening show here today. And uh, we mentioned a lot of times, uh, as of recent in recent years, these OAC teams don't play at second week. They usually have that bye week that second week. There's going to be a flag here. A little scrum in there between Prince Franklin and Muskingum receiver Darius Hayes Caruth. A little pushing and shoving leads to a flag. One thing you don't want to do if you're Otterbein is is make some some stupid penalties. That one was just a matter of pride. 
Prince Franklin, the Ohio Dominican transfer. Number 11 on the offense. Excuse me, number, check that. Number 4 on the offense. On sportsmanlike conduct, number 11. 7. On the defense. Those penalties offset. Second down. So those penalties are going to offset. More of a tap on the wrist than anything. Again, just some pushing and shoving down here near the Otterbein sideline. But if you're going to push and shove and, and draw a penalty, you don't want it to be in front of your head coach, oh, right in front of his face. Definitely. And that one was. Clock ticking. About a minute left in this opening half of football here in Westerville, Ohio. Brody Hahn, handoff, he keeps the ball himself and throws a play action. He's got Darius Hayes Carruth on the sideline and out of bounds is gonna stop the clock. But not before Darius Hayes Carruth on a nice corner route to move the ball. Muskingum again in Otterbein territory. Let's see if they can score here to keep this one. At least somewhat interesting going into half. Otterbein does lead this one 27 to nothing if you're just tuning in. You're listening to Otterbein TV. Brody Hahn stepping up. He's going to keep the ball himself. Tries to get around a tackler. But a nice job there by Jake Harper on the tackle. Muskingum is close to the end zone now. But the question is... Can they put together some points before the end of the half or will they just slip up again like they've been doing since the first and second quarter? Just to update you on this score, I'm just as fascinated with this game as much as you are if you're a Big Ten football fan. Cincinnati trails Michigan 17-14, but it seems like they've been moving the ball really well. They're, they got down in Michigan territory, but it looks like they're forced with the fourth and ten situation. So Cincinnati hanging in that game. Former defensive coordinator Luke Fickle coaching the Bearcats down there at Cincinnati. Cincinnati has always been one of those programs that just kind of somewhere in between being a MAC level program and being Ohio State, they've kind of just kind of sat in the middle. They've made some BCS games before, but since they don't play in that Power Five conference, they don't really get a whole lot of attention. You wonder if that will change in the upcoming years if Cincinnati will decide to join one of those Power Five conferences, which one it will be after the Big East football kind of folded. We're here watching some OAC football. Here's Brody Hahn stepping back, rolling out to his right, looking for a receiver. Doesn't look like he's going to find one. Going to try to get out of bounds. Austin Jones chasing him down. Had some help by fellow senior Stephen Carpenter. And I wonder if he got out of bounds. Nope, he didn't get out of bounds, so Muskingum is forced to use their third and final time out of the half. They're gonna be faced with a third and one situation at their at Cardinals 18 yard line with 22 seconds left on the clock. They could certainly use a score here. You wonder how they're going to do it. Otterbein's defense has played very well so far. You almost wonder if Muskegon might put the field goal unit out there just to put some points on the board going into halftime. I would do that if I was the offensive quarter right now. If they can't get a play right now, I would hurry up and try to put some points up, three, seven, six, whatever it takes, because right now it's just a blowout for with 27-0 Cardinals with 22.3 seconds left. And I would definitely, definitely figure out a way to get some points up, whether it's field goal attempt or just putting down a touchdown. But we, I feel like the Muskingum offense needs to now dial in and get something done right now. Brody Hahn throwing over the right. And a little pushing and shoving there as the ball was in the air. It looked like it will likely be pass interference. I'm not sure on what side it will be likely be on Brandon Pascal. More often than not, that call goes against the defense. Brandon Pascal, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to prevent the touchdown. As a former defensive back myself, when that ball is in the air, you do whatever you can to prevent that receiver from catching it. 
especially when Muskingum only has so many seconds left on the clock to score a touchdown. That ball is going to be marked way deep and close to the goal line. Looks like they're going to put it at the four-yard line. So a huge, huge break there for Muskingum. They almost got a touchdown, but the defensive pass interference with 17 seconds left on the clock provides Muskingum a first and goal. They got zero timeouts, so they're going to need to run some quick plays. Pass. Oh, broken up nicely there. Looks like the pass breakup was senior Stephen Carpenter. Nice job there by the Cardinals to break that pass up. That pass was intended for Granger Long, the tight end. Granger Long for the Muskies has had two receptions for 24 yards on the day. Still no touchdowns for Muskingum. And they got 13 seconds left in this first half to put one on before heading into the locker room. Here's Brody Hahn again in that shotgun formation. Neither of these teams have gone under center yet. Brody Hahn dropping back, holds it, keeps it himself. Looks like he tried to run, was stood up. Clock is ticking. Muskingum's going to have to hurry that field goal unit on the field. I don't think they're going to get off in time. And that is going to be the first half here at Memorial Stadium. Andre Douglas with the huge stop. Arterbein leads this one 27 to nothing. They look really sharp so far. And Nate, what do you like out of the Cardinals? I mean, you can't really pick. You can't really decide, can you? They just look good all around. They put up a shutout here in the first half, heading into the locker room. Definitely the big factor in this game would absolutely be Logan Stepp. He has been putting up the numbers today with a couple of rushes, but one with the one rush that led him to a touchdown for over 70 yards, which is very impressive. And he looked at some quarter running wide receivers known as Hunter Joseph and Julian Lowe. Those two, those three are actually the biggest impact in this game. But look at the defense. They have given up zero points during this game. And Muskingum has been close to the end zone almost every time, but just is very, not close enough to get a touchdown or any points. Look, looking at Muskingum's offensive stats here, you're really right. You wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, they've, they've, Muskingum has moved the ball. They've gotten 13 first downs, 104 rush yards, 105 yards through the air. Brody Hahn has ran for 56 yards off 10 attempts. On the Otterbein offensive side, Logan Stepp having the big first half. Nine completions off 15 passing attempts for 208 yards, three touchdowns. His longest going for 55 to start the game. Logan Stepp, also on the ground, has had seven attempts, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Isaiah Richmond with four attempts, 29 yards. Kristen Johnson, eight attempts, 28 yards. And Dakota Smith, two touches for two yards. Hunter Joseph having the big day at receiver. Six receptions, 171 yards, three touchdowns. This is the longest going for that 55-yarder. Julian Lowe, the only other receiver for the Cardinals, who has three receptions for 37 and a long for 15. Otterbein looking really good through two so far. We're going to take a break. Thank you so much for tuning in to Otterbein TV. I'm Hayden Hausorn here with my partner, Nate Ennington. Catch us after the break.
Now the band would like to perform a band favorite, the Spinners Rubber Band Man. Finally, the band will perform the classic Chicago hit, 25 or 6 to 4. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The band staff is Jordy Villanova, Dr. Dan King, Eric Frisch, Linnea Johnson, and Zoe Dieter with senior staff Kenzie Armstrong and Tabitha Rucker. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cardinal Marching Band.
I don't know of anything uh, in this region that is like Kindness matters. Kindness matters because I think it makes us more of a global community and especially at Otterbein it makes us closer and when we are closer we learn better. Kindness matters because it is what shapes a great university like Otterbein. Kindness matters because teamwork makes the dream work. Kindness matters because you never know what someone else is going through and by taking time out of your day to do something special for someone else, you never know how much you can impact um, that individual. Kindness matters because you never know who you can help. My gift of kindness is working with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to raise money and also awareness for the children so that their parents can focus on loving the children instead of having to worry about treatment, travel, um, and housing expenses. My gift of kindness to Otterbein was being able to connect students from all different political backgrounds and ethnic relations together to have a great discussion on how we can move forward in our society. My gift of kindness was serving families at the Ronald McDonald House and cooking them meals because they aren't in their home and they are somewhere that's unfamiliar to them. My gift of kindness was serving as a mentor for young girls. During my time at Otterbein, my gift of kindness was to find sponsors for the 5K Fun Run for Hunger Heroes. My act of kindness to Otterbein was doing over 1,000 community service hours at my time at Otterbein it, uh, throughout Westerville, Columbus, as well as the Otterbein community. My gift of kindness was volunteering at Nationwide Children's Hospital, working with children battling different diseases. Kindness matters because it's the future of our world, our nation, and our communities. Kindness matters because it's important to make sure you're helping one another because they're your family in the end of the day. Kindness matters to me because giving back is more rewarding than receiving. Kindness matters because it's filled with hope. The kind act that you are doing will make that person feel that the world isn't always such a bad place to be in. Kindness matters because it is, it is within each and every one of us to be able to make connections with one another and to be able to progress our conversations about how we view the world and about how we would like to live. Kindness matters because a, a simple act of kindness can change anyone's perspective on a situation. And kindness matters because everybody has unique gifts and one person's actions can change a community and a community's actions can change the world. We're back here at Memorial Stadium. We're back. Wait, excuse me. Sorry. We're back here at Memorial Stadium in Westerville, where the Cardinals led after the first half, 27 to nothing, and it was such a great half showing by the Cardinals. They seemed to dominate when they had the ball on defense. Certainly, Muskingum was moving the ball well, but they just they would get down within 20 yards, Nate, and they just they just couldn't score. Do you expect that pattern to continue here in the second half? Well, I definitely expect them to have the same pattern for the offense for Otterby. For the offense for Muskingum, I hope they have something different planned because the last half wasn't the best. So I would say during the locker room, offense, offensively, they were talking about when we get to the what were they going to do at the end zone and when they're close, what they need to limit down, which would be interceptions, fumbles, penalties anything for them to score but overall Otterbein definitely definitely stick to one passing because boy Hunter Hunter Joseph and Julian Lowe have been doing impressive during the first half and so same goes to Logan Stepp the quarterback who has over 200 yards from passing 
and what a big over 70 17 yard run to for, for a touchdown that gave the Otterbein Cardinals a 27 point win right now yeah you mentioned him throwing for over 200 yards but that 113 yards on the ground including that 76 long touchdown run that he had was all on his own I mean, it was the play-action pass, and then he just kind of broke it off into his own run. And it doesn't really look like he's moving fast, but, I mean, he just kind of glides, doesn't he, just like he's on ice. And, and uh, the Cardinals have looked very well in other aspects on defense. They've made some big plays. Uh, Fred Hargrove was a big part of the defensive effort, getting some tackles there on the last possession for the Muskies. Uh, Jake Harper's been all over the field. Stephen Carpenter has had a couple broken up passes, so certainly on both sides of the ball, the Cardinals have looked very well. Brandon Pascal, the freshman defensive back, had that interception there on the on one of the last drives of the first in the first half. And um, but uh, we're happy to be back and bringing to you more football action here as we mentioned this is the only game in the OAC taking place uh, not the only game taking place however uh, in Columbus as you know the big one is on tonight at 730 down at the shoe that one uh, I'll certainly be tuning in I don't have a ticket myself I know a lot of people were scrambling last minute to find tickets tickets for Memorial Stadium are a little easier to find in fact it looks like a lot of folks have uh, the stands here at Memorial Stadium seem relatively full, and uh, you usually expect that on the opening uh, week um, for college football here in Westerville. A lot of a lot of good college football fans in Westerville. Um, a lot of diehard college football fans recognize um, um, how good a football is is actually in Division Three at the Division Three level. Um, Certainly some athletes out here on the field today. Logan Steps looked really good as a dual threat quarterback. Hunter Joseph has been able to, to, to just blow past some of these defensive backs and, and get a couple and get a few scores himself. Julian Lowe has had to make some big catches uh, to keep some drives going. Um, but certainly Otterbein moving the ball very effectively when they do get the ball. Uh, they'll kick off to Muskingum to start this second half. They lead this game 27 to nothing. Muskingum has yet to answer the Cardinals. Sam Filippo's kick is deep and just into the end zone, taken out by the Muskingum returner out to the 15, but not much further than that. He's tackled at the 17-yard line where Otterbein's defense will come onto the field and try to force another three and out. There seems to be an injury on the on the field. It is a Muskingum player. Let me try to get a name for you. That's just one of those things. It is a Clavion Birch, the junior for Muskingum, who is on the ground and being attended to by the athletic trainers over at Muskingum. Looks like he's gonna get up and jog off the field, hobbling, but under his own power, so that's always a good sign. We mentioned just kind of how dangerous a sport football can be. Seems like we've been fortunate so far to not have any major injuries. It's one of those things you always worry about as a football fan, and especially as a parent. If you're a parent tuning in to this one, Thank you so much for tuning in to Otterbein TV. We're proud to bring you live play-by-play -play action video feed from this game between Muskingum and Otterbein. This is Brody Hahn to start the second half for Muskingum. Has his receiver over the side, but it looks like he had his toes in bounds, but couldn't complete the pass. Incomplete. He was looking for Darius Hayes Carruth. Muskingum and Otterbein both coming into this game 1-0. One team will finish this game with their first loss of the year. So far, Muskingum is looking to be that team unless they can get some scores here in this second half. They're going to need to. They trail 27 to nothing. Brody Hahn, second and 10, out to his receiver. This is Granger Lawn who's going to get Pass the first down marker and out of bounds, but there's a penalty flag on the field. We'll see who this one's against. 
Fourth out of bounds by Prince Franklin, flag on the play. Prince Franklin, the cornerback who forced Granger Long out of bounds on that one. Awaiting the signal from the head official. Offensive pass interference. Number eight. 15 yards penalty remains second down. And it is going to be offensive pass interference. That one will go against the senior Joey Scott for Muskingum. Muskingum again just continuing to shoot themselves in the foot every time they get a little momentum going. They just seem to fall apart. Make uh, make it uh, just some sort of Balls on the 10 yard line. mental error, whether it's Second been an point. interception, a ball on the ground, or a penalty. They just, things haven't gone the Muskies' way. And they're faced with the second and 10 situation. They're backed up to their own 10. This is Brody Hahn evades the first tackler. Gets out, but hit hard by Fred Hargrove, who came screaming down from the safety position to force a third and very long situation here for Muskingum. We're still yet to see that screen pass. It's been a lot of quarterback option and uh, I'm honestly not surprised. Brody Hahn is kind of that similar Logan Step dual threat kind of quarterback. He can run and he can pass. He's missed some targets today, but he's also hit some targets. And they're going to need a big conversion here. Third and really long, third and 20. Pass over the top to Granger Long, and it's a catch. Muskingum will move the football. Fresh set of downs. That was a nice 22 yard reception by Granger Long, the tight end. So good job by Muskingum to break out of that early third and 20 situation and create a first down. They still trail 27 to nothing. And you wonder, Nate, if this team's gonna get back in Otterbein territory again for the umpteenth time today and maybe make another mistake. Well, I'm pretty sure the coaches are willing that they will go to the Otterbein side, but hopefully not to make another mistake. Brody Hahn over the top to Damon Jones, who dove, but no incomplete. No incomplete. Pass incomplete intended for number 12, Damon Jones. He had him. Damon Jones dropped that halfback per pass from Bernard Johnson that you saw in the first half was so perfectly drawn up and would have certainly been a touchdown had Jones caught the ball, but he just couldn't seem to secure it. And we talked about, you know, when the ball is in the air like that, sometimes it just seems too good to be true, and your mind just... It overthinks it, you know. Your mind just overthinks. You know, I don't just have to catch this ball. You got it. Just it seems too real. And uh, that got to the head there. Joey Scott, the receiver, down low. We haven't seen much from him today. Bernard Johnson with the carry for Muskingum gets out to the 37-yard line. Another third and long situation. Here for Muskingum. Third and six. Muskingum converted so far. They're one for one on this drive and one for one in the second half. Damon Jones up top all alone at the top of your screen. It's covered by Brandon Pascal. I'd look for that one. Han stepping back. Looked like he looked past batted in the air. And Brandon Pascal dove but couldn't turn over the interception. Muskingum will put their punt team back on the field. Otterbein with a three and out and a chance to put more points on the board. It looked like Brody Hahn going to Damon Jones, but decided not to and tried to give it off to his tight end. Instead, pass was batted in the air and almost intercepted. Fortunately for Muskingum, they'll get a chance to punt it and give some field position to the Cardinals. Snaps away. And punt is up, received by Julian Lowe. He's going to take, he's going to return this one. He's going to miss the first tackler, but wrapped up right at the 33-yard line. Otterbein's going to have a first and 10. Otterbein's offense coming onto the field, getting some new faces in the huddle, it looks like. And, uh, I mean, why not? You know, why not throw those backups in? You're up 27 to nothing. Looks like they're going to stick with their first team, though. But I expect shortly, especially if Otterbein gets a score here, to 
to work some new faces in because you always got to have your second string guys prepared. We talked about football being such a dangerous sport and guys get injured all the time. God forbid that happens to anybody on this Cardinal squad, but you know, it, it, it is a real part of the game. Richmond running left, a lot of laundry on the field. This one will likely go against the Cardinals. A lot of times when those flags come in by that line judge, it is holding. He only got a few there. Probably be brought back. We'll see what the call is. And it will be holding. That will go against Case Troyer, the senior for Otterbein. Can't stress how beautiful of a day it is today. Almost perfect football weather here at Memorial Stadium. Otterbein with the first to 20 on their own 23 step. Still on the shotgun formation. Richmond to his right. Hand off to Richmond. And it looked like maybe the ball went on the turf for a second, but picked right back up. Richmond on the carry. Tackle made by Otterbein with the second and 20. Tim Oosley with the tackle for the Muskingum and Muskies. Play, second, and 20. second and long for the Cardinals. They'll try to run that mesh route likely. Or we'll see what they call here. See if they decide to go more conservative or whether they'll push downfield. It's play action pass. Step dropping back. Throws over the middle to Julian Lowe. What a catch. And he's being drugged. And... Held up just enough for Muskingum to catch up for him and tackle him, but not before he gets to the 49-yard line. And a fresh set of chains for the Cardinals. He's been wide open it all game today. Julian Lowe is very, very active, and there it comes again. This one's going to be an offsides on Peyton Vanderkoy down here at the bottom. They didn't take time to get set. Peyton Vanderkoy was the receiver split out the bottom, that no huddle offense, quickly getting the line. Five yard penalty, remains first down. We'll be offsides on Vanderkoy. So Otterbein quickly trying to get to the line there. Didn't allow Peyton to get set with that line, Judge. You see that a lot. A lot of times, for those who don't know, when those receivers are looking at those line judges and pointing at them, they're making sure that they're on sides and letting the Officials know that they're on the line. You can only have seven men on the line, and if you have any less than that or any more than that, you get flagged. Ball snapped, thrown up in the air to Joseph, and he caught it with one hand. And there's a flag on the play. I feel like it'll be holding. Pass intended for Hunter Joseph. Wow, what a catch by Hunter Joseph with one arm being held back and the other catching the ball. With one arm being held back there by the defensive back, Trojan Kanea. Number five on the defense. I'm sorry, that's Caleb Gators who's going to get the call against him. He was the cornerback holding on to Joseph's arm, but he just stuck that other one out and just snagged it. What a play. What a show of athleticism there by Joseph. Otterbein moving the football quite well here in their opening drive of the second half. They lead this one 27 to nothing. Here at Memorial Stadium, the sun has just kind of peeked over the stadium, providing these fans with a little shade from the press box. Like I said, it's just kind of that weather that you could be fine in either a hoodie or a t-shirt. Just perfect football weather. And this campus really shines brightly when the sun, on this nice Saturday college football afternoon. Richmond's brought back in the backfield. He's going to lose a few there. John. Otterbein, I just can't tell you enough how good they've looked in the passing game today. Logan Sepp threw over 200 yards in that first half. Hunter Joseph had 171 through the air. These Cardinals just looking really good with the passing attack today. Step in the backfield. Takes the ball himself off quarterback draw, tries to get through a tackler, but it ends up Step just up, falling to the ground under his own power. 
and that is certainly something you worry about when your quarterback is running the ball a lot, him getting hurt, and I mean it only takes us one again. We don't want to see any of these guys get hurt, especially, you know, a lot of these guys, Nate, you and I are friends with. It's one thing you hate to see, especially with guys that just have so much talent and so much potential go down. It definitely, it really sucks and is unfortunate to see. But Step making the smart decision and falling on his own. It's a third and six for the Cardinals. Step dropping back. Has Joseph wide open on the side. Caught, past the chains. And they're gonna move the they're gonna move the first down and get a new set. Cardinals fans have had a lot to clap about today. They lead this one 27 to nothing, taking off a good chunk of time of the third quarter in this one. Eight minutes is what shows. Bubble screen over here to Julian Lowe. He's gonna miss a couple tacklers and run over a third. But finally brought down. And Otterbein just moving the ball with ease through the air so far. We have another injury down from the Muskie. It might be the same exact person. And it does. It looks like it's Clavion Birch, the injured defensive back. Down for Muskingum. So clearly having some issues with that ankle. Excuse me, I think we got the wrong number there. Hard to tell. Clavion Birch was in on the play. It's either Nehemiah Bowie or it's Dimitri Turner. Looks like Brian Brown. This, okay, so it's the safety Brian Brown. He's a freshman. Starting freshman for the. Well, we don't have the fancy instant replay equipment that they have over at ESPN, so a lot of it is just kind of guessing. <laughs> But he seems to be in okay shape. After the Julian Lowe reception that went for about seven, provides Otterbein with the second and short situation. And officials signaling to fix the play clock here after it winded all the way down. Otterbein in no rush right now. They don't mind. Taking some time off the clock. And going off to celebrate this one. Second and three. Muskingum showing blitz from the outside linebacker. Ball snapped. Step dropping back. Has Julian Lowe on a seam route. And close to the end zone. Brought down at around the three. Nice. Quick catch and release job there by Logan Step to get that shotgun snap and get rid of it. And even a better job by Julian Lowe to get up that seam, get in between the linebacker and the safety, and to snag that one. They are just moving the ball very, very effectively so far. They're down to the three-yard line, first and goal for the Cardinals. Josh Pleininger moving from left to right. Ball snapped. Hunter Joseph just missed him. Pass intended for number one, Hunter Joseph, out of bounds. Second down. A good appreciation from the Otterbein student body. A lot of them like to stand along that first row. And it is a good crowd here at Memorial Stadium. Memorial Stadium went through a multi-million dollar renovation back in 2005. Otterbein's been playing football here much longer than that. Motioning Josh Pointinger in. Hand off to Richmond. Richmond breaks the first tackler. Was looking for a block. Trying to get around and just kind of fighting to get back to the line of scrimmage. And he looks like he'll lose a yard on the play. He'll lose a couple yards. They're going to move it back to the six yard line. Third and goal situation. Otterbein putting some receivers in. 
Looks like they'll move out of that big heavy package and throw in a couple slot receivers. Peyton Vandercoy and Tyler Sorg, the two receivers coming in. They're going to split them out wide. Hunter Joseph all alone at the top of your screen. Isaiah Richmond in the backfield with Logan Stepp. Third and goal. Otterbein leads this one 27 to nothing. And there's a flag. It's going to be a delay of game against the Cardinals. It took too long. Timeout, Otterbein. Otterbein, Coach Tim Daup called the timeout before the foul. So they'll get a chance to think it over. We'll try to bring some scores from around the college football world. We've been trying to follow that Cincinnati-Michigan game. We know there's a lot of those fans in here, here in Columbus. Cincinnati trails 27 to 14 with 8.23 remaining in the fourth. Cincinnati does have the ball. Man, college football around Columbus, Saturdays. It's like you go all summer, just kind of, you know, baseball's fun and all. Major League Baseball is okay. A lot of a lot of Tribe fans, a lot of a lot of Reds fans here in Columbus. But then once that college football, that first Saturday comes back around, everything just feels right again, doesn't it? Oh, definitely. I feel like college football, when it comes to college football season in Ohio, especially in Columbus, that is where on Saturdays it's probably the biggest and crowdest you'll ever see in Columbus. A lot of these fans here at Memorial Stadium wearing Buckeye jerseys. In the same colors. It works. Here's Logan Stepp in the backfield. Richmond to his left. Ball snapped. Looking for Joseph. Looks back to the middle. Finds Julian Lowe. Touchdown, Cardinals. Step pass Julian Lowe for the touchdown. That's Julian Lowe's first receive, receiving touchdown on the air. First of the day. Logan Stepp. He's thrown seven on the year already. Excuse me, he's thrown six on the year. Nonetheless, very impressive. He threw for 18 last year. And through two games already, he's almost, he is a third of the way there to getting what he was at last year. Kick is up, extra point is good. Cardinals lead, 34 to nothing. Up, Otterbein just, over they just, they, Muskingum hasn't had an answer to that passing attack all day. Drive, it's been play, step to yards, low to Joseph. Seconds, it's been, a, it's been good to watch if you're a Cardinal low. fan. Definitely. Now for Muskingum's offense, I feel like they need to figure out a way to defeat the defensive end for uh, Otterbein here. But I got to tell you what, I am very ecstatic about the performance that Otterbein is performing right now for the first home game of the season and what an impressive crowd that is here today. You mentioned that it is the first home game of the season. Next week is homecoming. Otterbein takes on Wilmington for an afternoon game. San Filippo is sending that ball on the hash mark. And a kick off. Let's see if Muskingum can finally get on the board this drive. He's got some space brought down after a couple hits. He didn't think he was down. Ashton he kept Walker running. That was Ashton Walker on the return for the Muskies. Otterbein just trying to get a three and out here, get the ball back and continue to take off some time. They took off a lot of time on that clock. They took over possession. After Muskingum had the ball, again, there's only been two possessions, and already we've seen just about 10 minutes go off the clock. Ball snapped, hand looking for a receiver. He's got Granger Long in between a few Cardinals. It takes them to bring him down. He got a lot of yards after the play, about 10. They're going to move out to the 45-yard line. Muskingum just trying to 
Keep playing football. Just see if they can retain any life, if any, that they have left in them. Again, they've moved the ball well at times, but just haven't been able to score. Hahn to hand off to Bernard Johnson, who takes it out to the 50-yard line. Nice little run there by Johnson. It's going to be second and five. Cardinals sticking with their first string guys. Wouldn't be surprised if they put in the second string probably in the fourth quarter if still ahead. Otterbein's defensive backfield had four interceptions last week. Brandon Pascal has one this week. Puts Otterbein at five in the air. Hand off to Johnson. He breaks through the first tackler and gets out to the secondary. Bernard Johnson on the carry. Tackle by Fred Hardgrove. First down, Looks like Otterbein do. Otterbein does have a couple new faces in there on defense, including Ryan Tucho, the inside linebacker. So Tucho getting some looks. He had some varsity time last year for the Cardinals on special teams. He's a sophomore from Hilliard Davidson. So another Columbus boy getting some time. I'm sure his folks are either watching with us or here today. At the stadium. Second and eight, Muskingum. Again, in Otterbein territory. Still yet to score here. Thank you so much for tuning in to Otterbein TV. We're bringing you live video and live play-by-play -play action from this game between Otterbein and Muskingum. Right now, the Cardinals lead this one 34 to nothing. Well, Skingham's had some opportunities, but just hasn't yet to find the end zone. This is Hahn over to Johnson. Looks like he was thinking about that halfback pass again. It looks very similar, that little pitch out to the halfback. Bernard and Bernard Johnson, either he stutter-stepped or thought about throwing, throwing, throwing it, but kept it himself and got to the line of scrimmage. Third and eight for Muskingum. Otterbein trying to force a three and out here, get the ball back. And as you mentioned, maybe might see some new faces in on offense. I'm sure at the fourth quarter you'll definitely see that. So if you have a son playing today, stick with us because he might be getting in. Bernard Johnson on the bubble route. Looks like Brody Hahn thought about it, but ended up throwing for the first down to his receiver, Joey Scott. Number eight, Joey Scott. He's going to move the chance for Muskingum. Again, still in Otterbein territory, but yet to score all day. They're down to the 26-yard line of Otterbein. Ryan Tucho is awarded the tackle for the Cardinals. Brody Hahn on the left hash mark. First and 10 for Muskingum. Hand off to Johnson. Johnson's going to run for 10 there. And move the chains once again. It's a good run by Johnson. Johnson Muskingum in familiar territory. And Stephen Carpenter. Tackle for Otterbein. First down, Muskingum. Hargrove and Carpenter in on the tackle for the Cardinals. Muskingum with two receivers out to the right, one to the left. Hahn in the backfield with Johnson. The first down marker. He needs to get to the five for the first down. And Harper. Right now, he moved the ball to the 13, so it's going to be a second and eight chance here. Muskingum well, maybe to get a score. They tried to get a score at the end of the first half to send that field goal unit on, but since they didn't have any timeouts, they couldn't get the field goal off. Hahn to step back. Throws over to Jones. Or excuse me, that's Granger Long on the reception. On that nice little tight end out route, it's going to be a first and goal. So Muskingum looking to score here. Time certainly becoming a factor already in the third quarter. They trail by five scores. 34 to nothing. Two minutes left in this third quarter. But Otterbein's shutout hopes in jeopardy with Muskingum on the doorstep. Hand off to Johnson, touchdown, Muskingum. 
Finally, Muskie gets on the board. And thus erases the Otterbein shutout that they had to this point. Nonetheless, we will not forget the kind of defensive effort the Cardinals have put up here, getting some turnovers when they needed some. Sting him with the point after. That touchdown run was a four yard run, or excuse me, three yard run by Bernard Johnson. Kick is up and not anywhere close. Wide left and low. So the score holds 34 to 6. 34 6. Otterbein coming back out on the field. That was not a bad drive by Muskingum. If you heard it on the stadium, 10 plays for 73 yards. And Otterbein didn't give up a lot of big plays on that drive, but still gave up the score. And Coach Allen Moore, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinals, will meet up with his team on the bench again. And he can't be that upset because he knows Muskingum's offense can move the ball. You know, as long as your team doesn't give up the big plays and forces those offenses to do snap after snap before they get down to the goal line, that just leaves more room for them to make a mistake, maybe a turnover, as we've seen them turn it over on multiple occasions here today. Absolutely, and like you said, the coach shouldn't be mad because right now they've stopped the plays. They stopped Muskingum from scoring three times. This was just an incident where they got a three-yard rush and they got a touchdown, but he should be satisfied with what the score is right now, which is 34-6, to six. and I feel like Muskingum of uh, Arbon right now will feel pretty good about this lever. A little talk on the sidelines between the two teams. There's a little commotion. Otterbein first and ten for the Cardinals with some good field position and a chance to extend their lead even more. Otterbein put up over 30 last week in a nice effort. They won 36 to 14. 36 to 15 against Ohio Wesleyan. So already in back-to-back -back games have put over 30 points. Nice job. Christian Johnson on the By the defensive line of Muskingum to stop that one. It was Christian Johnson on the carry. Tackle by number 33, Tim He's ran for nine attempts and 28 yards today. Only rushing touchdown coming on that big 76-yard run. Quarterback keep from Logan Stepp. Right through the heart of Muskingum's defense. He is quite the dual threat quarterback. Motioning Josh Pointinger from left to right. Play action pass. Logan Stepp looking for a receiver and he just threw it over into the track. And out of play. It's gonna be third and 11. Looks like Stepp was looking for Julian Lowe but it was nice coverage there by the defensive back of Muskingham. Logan Steps thrown 14 completions today off 21 attempts. Seven completions to Joseph and seven to Lowe. You talked about, Nate, at the beginning of the broadcast, how important those guys are to Otterbein's offense. They're the only two guys to receive a pass from Step today. Step dropping back. Under some pressure, looking for Joseph, and a almost completed pass, but went right through the hands. It was a nice move by Step to step into that pocket and try to find some room to throw. He got the throw off, but just missed his target. Otterbein's gonna put the punt team on the field and give the ball back to Muskingum. A nice three and out by Muskingum's defense. Muskingum does not have a bad defense. They only gave up zero points last week to Waynesburg. I just feel like it's this Otterbein's offense that's causing the defense to struggle during the game. Back to return is Damon Jones. Just his second punt return of the day. This is a couple tacklers. Spins around the a couple more, but not before he gets tackled at the 30-yard line. A couple flags flying in. Looks like we're going to have two penalties on the play. One flag came in earlier, and another one after some more pushing and shoving. You know, these two teams don't like each other. 
That is for sure. Otterbein won last year's contest, 30 to 17, down at Muskingum's place. Just an update on that Michigan-Cincinnati game. Michigan pulls ahead, 36 to 14. Just under three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati with the ball, but that one looks like it's out of reach. Here's a penalty. Number 29 on the receiving team. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 29. First down. So both those penalties going against Muskingum. And just a little, that's going to go against Nehemiah Bowie, the freshman. Not only holding on the play, but having a personal foul drawn on him afterwards. Freshman mistake. Otterbein with a chance to get another three and out here and work some new faces in. It looks like Blaine Voorhees will come in at the safety position to relieve Chris Bevins. Chris Bevins struggling with a, a lower body injury through much of training camp. Coaches would like to play him more. They would like Chris Bevins to be the starter. He started today, did not start last week. In fact, he only played about a third of the game last week. Blaine Voorhees, the junior, saw a lot of the action. And uh, they're going to rest Chris Bevins, let him rest that leg. He's stretching over here on the sidelines. He's done some good work today. He's been part of the effort that's kept Muskingum off the scoreboard for a majority of the game, all the way up until the last drive by Muskingum. It was 34 to nothing at one point. Now it's 34 to 6. Muskingum with the ball back. Is it too late for a comeback, Nate? I feel like it'll be a little bit too late for the comeback. With only 56, le 56 seconds left in the third, 34 to 6. I feel like Arbine, if Arbine's defense stays consistent and not allowing any more touchdowns, I definitely feel like it'll be over. If Muskingum's going to spark any sort of comeback, they're going to need to score this drive. Maybe going to the final quarter with a little bit of momentum. Otterbein suffered some close losses at the beginning part of last year. They started off the year one and three, and all three of those losses coming from a combined point differential of just 10. So Otterbein lost some close contests in the, in the early going last year including 16 to 10 game to Ohio Northern. From the 30, they lost yards, and then half the to Buff State last year in an opening game by three points. And they lost that tough one on homecoming to Capitol, 42 to 41 after a controversial batting call. If you ever heard of batting, it's when a player tries to advance the ball forward when the ball's on the ground. They called that against the the Cardinals last year after a blocked punt. And Otterbein certainly has not forgotten that game. They'll be looking to get back at the Crusaders when Otterbein travels to their place. Hurry on on the carry. That matchup is set to take place September 30th at Capitol. Jay Another 1.30 kickoff. And Austin Corey on the tackle. But we'll turn our attention back to this game. Bring up second down. Where Muskingum has the ball on their own 12-yard line, looking to push out of their own territory and maybe spark a little momentum if they can. Brody Hahn to throw and almost picked off there by Fred Hargrove, who came screaming down. Granger Long. Granger Long on the reception is going to get out to the 16-yard line. Muskingum needs to get to the 21 if they want to get a first down. It's going to be second and five, but three, that quarter is going to go down in the books through three. Otterbein leads this one 34 to six, and they've looked so good so far to this point. Muskingum's done a good job moving the ball down to Otterbein territory, but they just haven't been able to score. They got the last one off a four-yard four Bernard Johnson rush. 
to finally put them on a board. A missed PAT keeps them at six. Final quarter here at Memorial Stadium. And certainly some happy faces around Memorial Stadium. Otterbein fans very pleased with the effort of the Cardinals so far. You're watching Otterbein TV. I'm Hayden Hausorn here with my broadcasting partner, Nate Ennington. And together we are bringing to you live play-by-play -play action along with the rest of the team here at Otterbein TV. If it weren't for the efforts of the camera crew, and the video board operators, we wouldn't have been able to brought you this broadcast. So we thank the rest of the Otterbein TV team for their efforts today to bring to you live action of this game. Pass out to Bernard Johnson. He moves out to the, his sideline. Gets pulled down out of bounds at about the 25. Muskingum moving the chains again. It just it doesn't seem like they've struggled offensively. No, definitely it, not. The problem is, I believe, that once they get to pass past the half mark and go towards the end zone, that's where they struggle most, and that's I feel like Otterbein really kicks into gear and figures a way to stop them from scoring. And that's but they've been doing that all game except for that one touchdown. Muskingum has 21 first downs on the day. Pitch out to Bernard Johnson. He's going to get a couple. Pitch to number 21, He's Bernard not going to get out of bounds, however, and the clock's going to continue to run. Time is Fred certainly a factor. Here in Westerville, Ohio, as Otterbein has a firm lead, 34 to 6, after the big opening two quarters they had, scoring 13 in the first, 14 in the second. Four passing touchdowns a day for Logan Step. One rushing for Step. Five all-purpose. Pass out to Granger Long. Granger Long misses the first tackler. Tries to go down second. Brought up and held by Fred Hargrove. Awaiting for the rest of his team to come and bring him down. It's going to be a third and one situation for Muskingum. We'll see what they can do to move the football and get these chains moving. Third and one, ball on the 34 yard line. Well, we're through the first minute and a half in the final quarter at Memorial Stadium. Please tune in to next week's homecoming matchup as the Otterbein Cardinals host the Wilmington Quakers at 2 p.m. here next Saturday. You can catch all the action on Otterbein TV. I will be bringing to you live play-by-play -play action once again. Otterbein's going to hold up Bernard Johnson and not allow them to get the first down. It looks like... Looks like that's Brandon Cox who's hobbling off the sideline for Muskie. Hoping that injury is not very serious. He got out of there under his own power. Muskie is sending their punt team onto the field. Otterbein sticking with a punt safe look. They got one too many guys on the field. Julian Lowe back to receive the kick. Finally figuring it out. Julian Lowe's back to receive. Blade Voorhees came off for the Cardinals. Ball snapped. Kick away. Lowe to receive it. He's going to take this one. Gets around the first tackler. And gets out over on the far sideline. Where Otterbein will take possession at the 41. Otterbein's offense coming out on the field one more time. We'll see if they put some new guys in there. They have a nice lead here in the fourth quarter. 34 to 6, 12.43 remaining on the clock. Logan Steps had a field day, both in the air and on the ground. He's thrown for four through the air and ran one. Hunter Joseph having a big day. He's got three receiving touchdowns in today's contest, four on the year already through just two games. Step throwing it over to Julian Lowe. Julian Lowe on the bubble screen has some space along the sidelines. Braces the contact for the first one. 
And Cardinals want a late hit. Finally, the flag comes in. That penalty is going to go against Brian Brown, another freshman. He's going to get a late hit call. Not before Otterbein moves the football a little bit more. Dead ball, personal foul. Late hit. 27. So personal foul going against Brian Brown, the freshman cornerback. Excuse me, freshman safety. That's a really young defensive backfield for Muskingum. Two true freshmen, a sophomore and a junior, so no senior starting in the backfield. And uh, it's shown today. Handoff Johnson to the right. Gets tackled right about the 32-yard line. Nice run for about six there for the Cardinals and for Johnson. He hasn't gotten a whole lot of touches today, just, just his 10th attempt. He's going to hand it off to him one more time. Johnson out to the right. He's going to scamper for about one. Going to give Otterbein a second and four situation. Or excuse me, third and short. Yeah, third and three. Opportunity here for Muskingum to try to get off the field. Logan Steps hit Julian Lowe on eight completions today. Julian Lowe had nine last week. Joseph and Lowe have been Steps' only two targets of the day. He motions Josh Pointinger from left to right. Sitting in that, that wing back position on the right is Pleininger. And off to Johnson. Johnson's going to be stood up just Pick short of the marker. Here. So decision here for Coach Daup whether he wants to kick this one. And uh, if, I, if it were me, I'd say, you know, let, let San Filippo kick it. He hasn't had to kick a long one so far this year. I agree with that. Looks like we have a new face going down there, number 77. Justice May, who wasn't one of the starters to start off with, so good to see someone start, someone's news to start. Justice May got a little bit of time in last week's game. Logan Step with the fake jet keeper gets the first down. Step on the carry, close to the first down. At least that's what it would appear up here. Looked like he got passed. Officials taking their time to decide this one. It looks like they're going to bring out the chain gain here. They're going to get a measurement, and we'll see if Otterbein will continue possession. It looks like it was a very Muskingum favorable marking. I certainly thought Step had fallen over the line, but... And it is. It will be a first down for the Cardinals. Step gets the first down. So Otterbein with a chance to kill off more clock. They lead 34 to 6 with 1040 remaining in this contest. First to the OAC. And what a fun one it's been if you're a Cardinal fan. Three receivers out to the left for the Cardinals. Josh Pleininger motioning over to that tight end. Only two to the left now. Step in the backfield with Johnson. Ball snapped. Hand off to Johnson. Johnson's going to get maybe one. Nope, he's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. Christian Johnson on the carry. Tackle made by Drew Lowry and Tim Oosley. Memorial Stadium. Fans still Go sticking game. around watching their Cardinals Christian play. Jones. They've enjoyed it so far to this point. And it has been fun, hasn't it, Nate? Yeah, it surely has. I love to see the first home game of the season with a start off with a decent sized victory right now. Hopefully they can keep it up and I'm very pleased with what I've been seeing so far by the offense. Step to throw, Peyton Banner going touchdown, Cardinals. Five touchdowns for five. Logan Step finds Peyton Vandercoy. Vandercoy's second receiving touchdown of the season. 
Otterbein with 40 points. And that is exactly why the fans have stuck around. Otterbein with a nice win here today. If it holds, likely will. Otterbein's done a good job maintaining this lead up to this point. Kick is away. Good. They lead 41 to 6. Otterbein went 2 and 3. Had a 2 and 3 record last year here at Memorial Stadium. But they'll start out this season 1 and 0. And that one is certainly the dagger, I would say. They've done a good job. That scoring. Man, the bit it's just been the big plays all day for Otterbein's offense. Most, mostly passing for Logan Stepp and his wide receivers. He has some rushes, but definitely, definitely passing has been the key to this Otterbein's victory. With five touchdowns for Logan Stepp, that's just impressive, and he's been sticking to passing to get their team to a good victory right now. Otterbein with plenty of big plays. If you've been watching this one all the way through, we thank you for tuning in. This is Otterbein TV. I'm Hayden Hausorn here with my partner, Nate Eddington, and we are so happy to be bringing you this fine, fine victory that Otterbein will likely walk away with. Flag on the field, just nine minutes and 34 seconds away from making this one official in the books. Again, Muskingum is not a bad team. They won last week one to, they, they they won last week nineteen to nothing against Waynesburg. So Otterbein's offense going up against a good Muskingum defense. Chris Weck on the defensive end for Muskingum was de, was named defensive player of the week after his nine tackles, three tackles for losses, an interception, and a sack. I mean he played lights out last week. He's made he's he's done a lot on the run game today, but so far Nobody on this defensive line has able, been able to get to step and stop him from having the game that he's had. Logan stepped through over 307 yards after that last touchdown to Vanderkoy. Vanderkoy with the only other reception aside from Lowe and Joseph on the day. So you think about that. When you sit here and you ponder what Otterbein's offense can do, they've only thrown to Hunter Joseph and Julian Lowe all day, and they've been able to do this kind of damage. Imagine what they can do when they work some of their other guys in. Josh Pleininger, we see that we saw them do that a lot last week. When, when Otterbein kind of had a slow start last week to the, to the first half against Ohio Wesleyan, Josh Pleininger had five receptions in the first half. You know, they worked those other guys in, they threw it to halfbacks. Here with a halfbacked bubble. Hahn threw it over on a halfback bubble to get some yards. It's Darius Hayes Caruth who's going to get down close to the first down marker. It's going to be second and short. But Otterbein has weapons just everywhere. Up and down, they just got guys that can make plays. And we talk about the kind of depth that they have at defensive backfield. You know, they had four interceptions last week. This week they get another pick. They've done a good job so far. And now they're working some new faces in there, trying to get those guys experience. That way they just have those options. Connor Fry is in at cornerback. Melvin Medina up top, so working some new defensive backs in. Here's Bernard Johnson on the bubble screen. He's going to get some space. Out along the sideline, he can run. And he's going to get down in the end zone. Touchdown, Muskingum. We just talked about Otterbein putting some new faces in at defensive back. Looked like it was Melvin Medina who couldn't get around the blocker and stop Bernard Johnson from getting up the sidelines. Just Bernard Johnson's an athletic guy. If he gets some space along the sidelines, he can take Love off. And we saw that there. Otterbein got a little late to Hahn there. It's going to go for a roughing the passer penalty, which will be enforced on the kickoff. Otterbein still leads this one 41 to 12. Point after from Muskingum. Kick is up, and this one is through. Off now is kick. Is good. 
So a nice little drive there by Muskingum. A big play by Bernard Johnson. It's been the biggest play we've seen by them all day. We mentioned earlier, uh, Muskingum, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I feel like if they started out like this from the, from the first touchdown and uh, this touchdown, at the first and second quarter of this game, it would be, a t it would be close right now, but I feel like it was just uh, miscatches and, and interceptions and fumbles that have caused them. Um, seven ball team, and I'm sure he certainly not thinks made off. He'll be pleased with touchdown, Bernard Johnson. Here's Julian Lowe to receive for the Cardinals. He took it at about the five. He's going to get not very far. Good coverage there by Muskingum's kickoff team. Ethan Hall and Tracy. Hope you're enjoying this Saturday college football. Thank you so much for tuning in to Otterbein TV. As I said before, I'm Hayden Househorn here with Nate Eddington and the rest of the Otterbein TV crew. Without them, we wouldn't be able to be broadcasting this game. So shout out to the cameraman and shout out to Deshaun back here doing such a nice job with his editing skills. And the rest of the crew down at the comm building. Here are the Cardinals. Steve Irwin in that quarterback for Otterbein. He's going to keep the ball and run for five. Some good college football games on tonight. We've been talking about Ohio State and Oklahoma going on right here in Columbus. But down at South Carolina and Death Valley, the Auburn Tigers go to Clemson. That will be a good game. That's a 3 versus 13 matchup. That game starts at 7 o'clock. Georgia and Notre Dame. Notre Dame breaking the top 25 for the first time this season. They'll host the Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, there's some good games on tonight. Stanford and USC. That's a 6 versus 14 mashup at USC. That's always a fun one. Oh, definitely. Oklahoma State with a huge win over South Alabama. That's another Second small quarter, school. Cardinals. Small school relative to Oklahoma State. Big school relative to Otterbein. Otterbein is a really, really small school compared to these other big names. Here's a handoff to Booby Smith. Booby Smith is going to be stood up at the line of scrimmage. Because They're going to give him one here. yard. Talking about college football, Probably make sure you tune in. To WOBN 97.5 on Mondays between 5.30 and 7.30. Myself down. and Tommy Barfi will be doing from the stands and Cardinal Sports talking all things Cardinal Sports, Otterbein, cross country, soccer, women's volleyball. We talk about it all and then we talk to, about professional sports. Make sure you tune in on the radio. As well as some other shows throughout the week. On WOBN 97.5, Otterbein's very own radio station. Muskingum's going to force a three and out for the Cardinals. Otterbein's going to give the ball back. Otterbein's missing some guys out there on the field. Coach Daub doesn't like that when guys miss their assignments. But here's Otterbein to punt. San Filippo, snap is good, balls away. Damon Jones thought about picking it up, but decided not to. Dean Supelek down there on the coverage as the ball goes out of bounds at the 32 yard line where Muskingum will take possession. San Filippo's kick is out of bounds at the 32 yard line for Muskingum will take over first and 10. Six minutes and 31 seconds is what stands in between Otterbein being 1-0 and Otterbein being 2-0. They lead this one 41-13. And 2-0 will feel real good. Definitely. To start off the league with the first, with 1-0 OAC Conference, I mean, that should be a good start for them and definitely a good start to for the home game, first home game of the season. That should feel pretty good for the Otterbein fans and for the Otterbein Cardinals football players. Long pass down 
but out of bounds. Otterbein could very well start 3-0. They play Wilmington next week. Otterbein's done well against Wilmington historically. Getting a big win down at Wilmington last year, 52 to seven. Otterbein's gonna feel good about this one. Muskingum and Otterbein. Definitely two teams that respect each other but don't really like each other. And as you've seen a couple times throughout today, some personal fouls. Here's Brody Hahn with some space out to the left. He's going to get a big run here and get close Brody to Hahn the 50-yard line. He's going to get tackled at the 48. Nice run by Hahn. Seems to be a flag on the play and an, 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 a player injured on the play. And another musky down. And that's not one thing you want to happen to your starters if your coach, Al Hogan, excuse me, Al Logan. Defense, number 14, 10-yard penalty. It's going to be a defensive holding going against Ryan Tucho, the inside linebacker for the Cardinals. OAC play kicks back up again next week. We mentioned... A lot of teams throughout the conference with the bye week. Heidelberg at Ohio Northern, Mount Union at Marietta, John Carroll at Baldwin Wallace, Wilmington coming here, and then the night game. This Muskingum squad plays right here in Columbus against Capital. Capital installing those new lights down there at their stadium. They'll get to play some night games now, which is cool. Otterbein usually gets one night game here a year. This one's this one's against Baldwin Wallace this year. That game will take place October 21st at 7 o'clock. Otterbein is 7-0 in their last seven games under the lights, including last week's win at Ohio Wesleyan. Primetime matchup. 12 points at the 42-yard line, first and 10. Otterbein plays two more night games this year, including October 14th against Heidelberg. That's at Heidelberg. That's 7 o'clock. And then, as we mentioned, that Baldwin-Wallace game the week after. Handoff to Johnson. Johnson through a hole. And a nice run there for about six. Another penalty flag coming in. Carried by Anthony Cole Young. Flag on the play. And it looks like Dave Kakuka, with his helmet off, will have to come out for a play. Otterbein getting some new faces in there at defense. Connor Fry in that cornerback. Melvin Medina in at the other cornerback. Desan Jefferson getting some time at strong safety. Zach Smith in at the defensive backfield. Blaine Voorhees. So Otterbein getting some new faces in, which is good for them, and it's good for the starters. They've certainly earned their fourth quarter rest. Personal fouls. 50, 56, 50, white, offense, and 51 on the defense. Those offset. Second. So some offsetting penalties. It's been kind of a scrappy game. Yeah, a lot of flags for unsportsmanlike conduct and a lot of a lot of aggression towards the both teams today. Otterbein and Muskingum, like I said, respect each other but certainly don't like each other. Muskingum has played Otterbein close the past couple years. This one not as close. This is Hahn rolling out to the left. And another penalty flag is going to go against the Cardinals. Brody Hahn on the carry. We're going to wait and see what this one is. They're discussing it over right now, but it looks like it will likely be a late hit and go against sophomore linebacker Brad Williams. After play was over. 
Personal foul. Offense. No, penalty will go against the offense. Personal foul. Defense. Number 43. The Grant Nolder set. got the, the penalty down. on that for Otterbein. It was Grant Nolder. You're right, number 43, Grant Nolder, the sophomore, getting the call against him. So a couple offsetting personal fouls here. And just kind of making us be here longer than we have to. Otterbein has this one wrapped up, but Muskingum getting their last few words in. It's just been scrappy. It's just been scrappy. You can tell that they're frustrated. They liked, They would have really liked to start the year off 2-0. and They look at Otterbein as a very beatable team. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't go their way today. Brody Hahn stepping back. Throws over the middle. He's got a man. It's Granger Long. Untouched and into the end zone. Touchdown, Muskingum. Nice. Brody Hahn over the middle. That's his first career touchdown through the air. Unless the one counted to Bernard Johnson. I might be wrong there. It might be his second of the year. Nonetheless, Brody Hahn could have a good career here at Muskingum. We mentioned that this is a young Muskingum squad. Not having a senior in the backfield and having a freshman quarterback in. We've seen Brody Hahn run. We've seen him pass. That one was a nice pass to a wide open Granger Long. It looked like it was a mental error or a mental mishap there by the Cardinals secondary. This Kingdom scoring drive, five plays, 68 yards, one minute, 25 seconds, 42 yard touchdown pass from Hahn to Joe. Just a minute and a half that went off the clock. Five minutes and six seconds, as you can see on your screen, separates Otterbein from being 1-0 and and being 2-0. With that touchdown, this one's still fairly out of reach for Muskingum. They still trail by three scores. Joseph and Lowe back to receive the kick from Barnett. Logan Steps staying loose on the sidelines here. You wonder if Coach Dow feels like he has to put him back in after that Muskingum score. I don't think there's any need to, but man, again, better safe than sorry. Here's the kick. It's going to be a shallow kick. Julian Lowe to receive. He's going to try to dance around a couple tacklers, but he's finally brought down to the 32-yard line. Excuse me, the 37. And that was Brody Hahn's second passing touchdown of the day. And the first one to Bernard Johnson was a pass. And uh, you certainly wonder what kind of career he might have here at Muskingum. If you've been watching the game closely, you can tell the kids have certainly got talent. Steve Irwin sticking in at quarterback for the Cardinals. Hand off to Johnson. Johnson has some space around the left. Tries a stiff arm, but is hit hard to the sidelines. Christian Johnson on the carry. He was brought out of bounds there. First out by Trayvon Potts and Nehemiah Bowie. By Nehemiah Bowie, who pushed him out of bounds, and Trayvon Potts. No game, second and ten. Trayvon Potts, the defensive back for Muskingum, took his helmet off on the sidelines after the hitting. You wonder if he got his bell rung. Christian Johnson's a hard runner. Not a big guy, but a hard runner. Nonetheless, coming in at 5'6", 188. Steve Irwin back. He looked for Hunter Joseph, but... It looks like a miscommunication on who was running what route. Joseph thought he was running a fade. Steve Irwin, the quarterback, must have thought he was running a comeback route, and that's where he threw it. Would have been a good play had Joseph came back, but nonetheless, it leaves Otterbein with a third and ten. And you just wonder why Otterbein maybe isn't just running the clock. I don't know. They probably just They probably are just trying to get a couple more plays for the second string quarterback but definitely they should run out the clock they're up by 41 they're at, they have 41 and it's 20 let's try to wear out the clock a little bit pass to Josh Pleininger is complete but he was tackled out of bounds so Josh that Pleininger. clock stops 
Tackle made by 46, Tracy Wilson. Cardinal space, fourth down. San Filippo on the punt for Otterbein. Joseph San Filippo out to punt once again for the Cardinals. Back deep is Joey Scott for Muskingum. Or excuse me, Darius Hayes Carruth is now punt returning for the Muskies. And he's not going to return this one. That punt's going to hit the turf at about the 28 and picked up by Zach Smith. Ball down at the 29-yard line by Zach Smith. First and 10, Muskingum. And that is where Otterbein, or excuse me, Muskegon will take over possession and try to get another score here to make this scoreboard a little more respectable. They did last drive. 41-20 is what shows here at Memorial Stadium. Otterbein led as many as 34 to nothing at one point before Muskegon finally got on the board with the Bernard Johnson three-yard run. And Brody Hahn still at quarterback. Throws a bubble screen out to Johnson and hit hard along the sidelines and out of bounds. Clock's going to stop. Pushed out by number 40, Stephen Carpenter. Ball spotted at the 38. Thank you so much for tuning into this Otterbein TV broadcast. I am Hayden Househorn here with Nate Eddington. And we thank the Otterbein TV crew and the cameramen for their work today. Without them, we would not be able to bring you this broadcast. It's a beautiful Saturday college football afternoon here in Westerville, Ohio. Memorial Stadium, Westerville's very own. Tackled by Stephen Masters and Jake Harper. Final minutes, winding down. on the clock. Otterbein will push their record to 2-0 and on the year. Muskingum falls to 1-1, and they got Capital next week. Capital still searching for their first win of the year. Pass back, Hans got a man over the sideline, it's Damon Jones and he catches it. After extending his hands out a nice play and a nice ball there. By Brody Hahn. Muskingum moving the football here in the final minutes of this game. Muskingum just trying to pad some stats here. They got the ball at the 20-yard line. Back is Hahn. Hahn escaping pressure, but he's not... Sacked in the backfield by number five, five Kyle, Kyle Bluest. Loss of four on the play. Under two minutes now at Memorial Stadium. Brody Hahn scampering to the right. Finds a man through some tight coverage. That's Hayes Carruth on the catch to move the ball a little bit down to the 13 yard line. They need to get to the 10 if they want to move the chains. It's going to be a third and three. Otterbein putting their first string secondary back in this game. Brody Hahn pass out to his halfback and it's going to be brought up. A nice tackle there by Jake Harper to not let the Muskingum halfback get to the first down marker. Fourth down. Final minute here at Memorial Stadium. Otterbein leads this one 41 to 20. They'll extend their lead one to nothing. Here's Brody Hahn with a quick pass. Touchdown, Muskingum. So Muskingum getting some final jabs at Otterbein's lead. But we mentioned maybe just a little too late. Otterbein leads 41 to 26 here. They'll extend their record to 2-0 on the season. 
Muskingum will fall to one and one. They'll play Capital next week at a night game down in Bexley, Ohio. Otterbein will play Wilmington right here on this field at two o'clock next week, homecoming game. If you can't make it to Memorial Stadium, make sure you catch all the action right here on Otterbein TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Hayden Halsorn here with my partner, Nate Eddington. We're in our final minute of this Muskingum and Otterbein matchup. I expect Muskingum to send their onside kick team in. Maybe trying to take a couple jabs at the end zone if they get possession. Looks like Otterbein's going to try to put their hands team out there on the field. Otterbein family and fans making their way down to the locker room entrance where they'll meet the players on their way back in. It's a nice moment for some of these parents who come from out of town to come watch their kids play. Make sure you catch the, some other college football action. Some going on right here in Columbus. That big game. Oklahoma Sooners taking on the Buckeyes down at the shoe. Tonight at 7.30. Onside kick formation for Muskingum. Otterbein's hands team on the field. Here it comes, here's the kick, it's away. And nicely handed by Brandon Pascal, the freshman defensive back. He falls right to the ground. And Otterbein's gonna send their offense out on the field one more time. I expect them to take a knee in this one. Players on the sideline making their way towards the 50 yard line, getting ready to shake hands. And Otterbein's just 43 seconds away from making this one official. Good outing for the Cardinals. They gave up a few touchdowns late, but they just scored so many at the beginning that you just can't forget the kind of effort that Logan Stepp put on today, throwing for five touchdowns. Hunter Joseph catching three of them. Julian Lowe getting his first of the year. Peyton Vandercoy getting his second of the year. Otterbein, for the first time, will get a chance to ring that brand new victory bell. That was so nicely put in after last season. And that will do it. Clock has expired here at Memorial Stadium. Otterbein Cardinals extend their record to 2-0. And Tim Dalp's record against Muskingum moves from 5-0 and to 6-0. Sure Man, Otterbein looked sure good today. And a lot of it was behind the effort of Logan Stepp, who threw five touchdowns, 307 yards off 16 completions. Logan Stepp also ran for 121 yards with a touchdown off nine carries. Julian Lowe was the leading receiver in receptions. He had eight for 97 yards and a touchdown. Hunter Joseph was the big touchdown scorer with seven receptions, 181 yards, and three TDs. Peyton Vandergoy with a reception and a touchdown, and Josh Pininger with one reception. That will do it from Memorial Stadium here in Westerville, Ohio. Nate, any final thoughts? I'm just glad to be here for my first uh, announcement here at Otterbein. I'm very glad that the Otterbein came out with the first home victory and a first conference victory as well. And I'm very excited to see what this team has for this season. I am very, uh, but I'm also excited to see Logan step through his final years here as a Car Cardinal quarterback. Otterbein hosts Wilmington next week and the homecoming matchup at two o'clock right here at Memorial Stadium. Make sure if you can't be here, you catch the action right here on Otterbein TV where I will be bringing you live play-by-play -play action once again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday college football. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next week.